applaud this man here, the first ever Japanese winner in the World Tour event. The FIA GT Championship Nations Cup is about to get underway. Really duck into the inside here. He does. Bit of a late reaction there for Ray and I'd say. to Sydney, home of the Opera House, glorious sunshine, and now Gran Turismo. We're on day two of the first leg of our world tour of the 2020 FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships. And we're coming to you live from Australia for the first time ever. Yesterday was all about team-based racing with BMW taking away the Manufacturer's Series Championship after winning both of their races and the second of which their strategy really did come into play on that infamous Mount Panorama track. Team strategy and skill were the focus of yesterday's racing, but today is all about the individual, where we have some of the best racers in the world fight it out to be the Nations Cup winner and take the fast lane to the world final at the end of the year. It looks pretty easy, right? You reckon you could do better? Why don't you find out how? To qualify through the online series, enter sport mode in GT Sport. Then battle it out in one of the 10 races of each of the stages. Players with the highest points totals in each of the regions will be selected. So much happened last year at the finals of the Nations Cup in Monaco, but I guess the two key things you need to take away from the whole thing were that Igor Fraga, who was tipped to take the crown, got knocked out in the semi-finals, and then Kazal basically went on to totally dominate the entire competition. Now it's a new year, it's a new season. What's going to happen this time around? Let's find out as qualifiers happened on Friday. Well, a very interesting Nations Cup qualifying session, or qualifying sessions, I should say, mm. here for World Tour 1 in Sydney. Jimmy Broadbent, and, uh, well, in the first group of qualifying uh, times that we had, five drivers separated by just three-tenths of a second. And two Australians in the top five. Here was one of them, Adam Wilk there. A very good performance for him. Not usually a car he likes at Red Bull X 2019, but I think maybe the advantage of being on home soil helped a bit, as did Danny Solis, a man who was very, very quick towards the end of 2019, looking to improve into 2020. Yeah, great to him doing so well. Adam's Willow also really pulled the rabbit out of the hat. Third quickest he ended up in that session. You can see the commitment he had through that chicane. Rick Kevelham as well, a driver who really sort of underperformed given by his own standards in 2019. Back on form though, so it seems early part of 2020. Not enough to top all this man here though. Cody Nikola Lukowski, the fastest man in the session. He set a quick banker lap time and improved on that on his second and final flying lap with a one minute 20.770. You can see what it meant to the Australian driver here in Sydney. Pole position on home soil. Well, Cody's chasing that win, and that pole position is the first part of that. You can see why he's happy about that, especially here in Sydney as well. I think I'd be happy about him too. Well, quite. I say pole position on home soil, but not necessarily in terms of the groups, because we had two groups of qualifying for the uh, Nations Cup, and in the second group, it was an absolutely frantic affair. Jonathan Wong set the early pace, as you can see. Baptiste Beauvoir, though, had a brilliant time. Go went to second quickest. Here was Takuma Miyazono, also on his final flying lap. The Samurai, as he is also known, the Japanese driver, putting in a great performance to end up on the front row at the end of that session for qualifying. But here is a man who was hugely impressive. Jonathan Wong, we know how fast he can be on his day. Today proved to be just that. He was quicker than Cody Lukowski on his first flying lap. And on his final flying lap, he came over the timeline to better that time and end up on pole position in the Nations Cup here in Sydney. A bit unexpected, I'm honest. I think Cody thought the same thing as well. And I think that, of course, a great start for, for old Johnny Wong, as you like to call him. But um, I, I, it's going to be a great fight between him and Cody, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's setting up an absolute treat here for World Tour 1 in Sydney. Nations Cup action ready to come here later on. That's how the qualifiers went down, but it's definitely worth noting that two of our local lads, Wilk and Lukowski, performed incredibly well within the top 
five. Another driver worth picking out of the pack, though, is Beauvoir, one of our French drivers, who placed third. And actually, if you look back at how the French drivers performed last year, they actually were really, really good at moving and pushing themselves up the standings, so they're definitely ones to watch moving forward. But you know what? It's not just about what I think. We want to know what you think. Hit us up using the hashtags below. And definitely, definitely make sure you pull out and let us know who our Michelin driver of the day should be. I think it's time to kick off our first World Tour Nations Cup. Oh, I'm so excited. It's beginning. Oh, my goodness me. Can you hear the crowd on their feet? Wow, it is good to be in Sydney. We're live in seven different languages tonight in Sydney for World Tour 1 of the 2020 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. My name is Tom Brooks, alongside me, Jimmy Broadbent. And before we go any further, we have to say a huge congratulations mm. to Igor Fraga, who has recently, just about 10 minutes ago, been crowned the 2020 Toyota Racing New Zealand Champion. A meteoric performance he put in all season, and he came good right at the end to crown it in superb style with a victory. Not to go into it too much, but we're all sitting here watching it on a little mobile phone, and as soon as it happened, a big cheer went up in the room. <laughs> Fantastic. Cut. Couldn't be more pleased for him. Goodness me. Well, back to the action here tonight. Nations Cup, of course, we have Manufacturer Series yesterday. Nations Cup here today. Let's guide you through the competition format here, uh, what we're expecting. So we've got 24 Nations Cup drivers who are trying to qualify for the final. They're separated into two groups of 12 drivers, as you can see, Group A and Group B. They then partook in different qualifying sessions. So the top six from each group in their respective races will go through into the final. Positions 7 to 12 in either group are eliminated. That means means we have 12 competitors going through into the grand final and of course we will be crowning our Nations Cup winner later on here tonight. Yeah, no rep charge this time, that's the main thing of course, so you get one chance to go through. But it's a bit more lenient, top six, so you know, if you're, if you're doing it right you should be okay. Well, people who are watching this for not necessarily the first time might be thinking, well, who are the people to watch and who should we be looking out for and such as like, uh, such as things like that. One guy who we cannot discount at all, Cody Nikola Lukowski, the Australian driver on home soil here this evening. And uh, he, of course, is very well known in Gran Turismo circles for the results that you can see on your screen. 2019, he took part in six events, qualified for all six finals, had three podiums in the World Tour, uh, finished second in the 2019 World Finals and also won the FIA Motorsport Games in November. Member. So he's got quite a CV built up. He's done everything but win one of these events, pretty much, which is very impressive. Pretty much always, always a bride's place, never a bride sort of thing. So I'm <laughs> sure he's willing to try and get that done on home soil. So yeah, I think he's got a good chance here, mate. Well, also, we've got to keep an eye out for the likes of the Chilean drivers as well, because if you keep an eye out for uh, Nicolas Rubilar last night uh, in the Manufacturers Series, he was uh, hugely impressive. But uh, keep an eye out as well for the likes of Coke Lopez, Takuba Miyazona. We know how impressive they have been over the course uh, of the last couple of years in these World Tour events. Well, Coke Lopez yesterday, he took the uh, Manufacturers crown with BMWs so on somewhat of a roll so much. Mr. Consistency, which is great if you haven't got a lisp. I really enjoy trying to say this every time. Uh, six World Tour events, he's never finished outside the top six ever. So lots of S's for me there. <laughs> also, we have, of course, Miyazono uh, came so close in Tokyo, just couldn't quite get it done. I think maybe the pressure got to him, but seems a bit more relaxed here. Yeah, it's really good to see Takuma Miyazono back on top form. Maybe we'll see him back on the top step here this evening as well. And uh, well, anything is to play for. Unlike yesterday in the Manufacturer Series, today is mm. all about the individual drivers in the Nations Cup. So it's uh, go hard or go home time, isn't it, really? Well, there's a bit of pressure as well, because you can't blame anyone else if something goes wrong. Wrong, so <laughs> you've got, got to be on it when you're racing. So what are we looking out for here tonight? We've got, uh, we'll go into the race strategy a little bit later on, but we've got some really exciting formats coming up in terms of the racing, in terms of the car categories, and a few surprises that uh, I was, uh, I'm looking forward to later on here. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what our race director does all the time. He goes, oh, you know what? Here's what we usually have. Let's just throw that away. <laughs> have something else in here. So yeah, going to be some good racing. Well, race one is uh, going to get underway very shortly indeed here tonight. But first, your respect, please, for the national anthem of our host nation, Australia.
Our Nations Cup competitors, as you can see on your screen, ready for semi-final A here tonight for the Nations Cup, our first race of the evening. So we'll be very excited to see how it all gets on here at uh, Luna Park. You can see uh, a very unique venue, one of the most uh, unusual ones that we've been to on the GT World Tour calendar so far. Now, I'll tell you what, it's quite some entrance in here. It's a just very big, terrifying face when you walk <laughs> in. So yeah, I had to try and get over my fear of uh, clowns when walking in, but yeah. Odd location. Well, let's take a closer look, shall we, at the circuit the drivers are going to be competing on here for semi-final A because it's the Kyoto Driving mm. Park um, in some very unusual machinery as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how this gets on because we're in the uh, the Mazda RX-7 Amamiya. 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 We've been trying to get this one worked yeah. out all afternoon, um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how that gets on because it's a road car. We're on sports tyres as mm. well, so there's going to be a lack of grip. There's going to be a lot of different variables to consider over the course of this race. A lot of the competitors are saying it's more of a drift car than a race car. That's what makes it a bit of fun here. So the tyre selection from the Sport Compound of Tyres, as uh, Tom mentioned, at the Koto Driving Park. Yeah, I mean, gi Giwa? Giwa? Easy it's for you to say, mate. No, none of us can pronounce anything here. <laughs> it's not like we're commentators or anything. But uh, uh, a really fun to track this. Of course, a fictional circuit in GT Sport. And a track that I actually, you can mistake it for a real track, I reckon, when you drive around. It, it's got all the right features. It really has, yeah. You can see there are 13 laps the drivers will have to partake in. Two times fuel consumption, 15 times times tyre wear. So keep an eye out for that because they've got to change tyres. They must use each type of tyre at least once. This is what we're expecting for the strategy. If you're on the hards uh, at the start, you'll go on to the mediums and then the softs towards the end. If you're on the mediums, you'll go on to the hards and then the softs. If you start on the softs, you'll go from them on to the mediums and then the hards towards the end of the race. So you can see our competitors all lined up and ready. Semi-final A for the 2020 FIA Gran Turismo Championships here in Sydney is about to get underway. We're on track here at the Kyoto Driving Park for semi-final A grid all lined up. Here is the man who starts from pole position. It's the Japanese driver Takuma Miyazono. Alongside him is the Briton Adam Sassuolo in the racing green machine. The second row of the grid, Baptiste Beauvoir, the Frenchman. Keep an eye out for him. He was hugely impressive in our world final last year. Salvatore Maraclino as well. The Italian lines up on row two. Row three is Adam Wilk, the driver from Sydney. Huge cheer from the crowd here tonight as well. Coque Lopez, the Spaniard, is in P6. And the next row of the grid is Rayan Derouche in seventh position. And then in P8, it's Mark Pennell, the Canadian driver. And the next row of the grid lined up is Alonso Regalado. And then in tenth position, you can see Jose Brea, the Spaniard. Pierre Lemoir lines up in P11, the Frenchman. He's going to have a lot of work to do down there with Fabian Portia. Interestingly for Fabian, he didn't qualify uh, in this event. He only arrived here yesterday morning, Jimmy Broadbent, so he's got a lot of uh, work to be done. Yeah, definitely on the back foot. I can attest to that jet lag. Isn't very, uh, very nice to experience. I've just about got over it myself. Looking forward to flying back tomorrow and starting it all again. But yes, so here's my hot pick for the event, not just because he was my pro driver in the Prime event, Adam Susuilo, another driver who is very, very fast online, but just is not able to convert it in to the events here. Now, tyre strategy. Top two drivers starting on that soft compound of tyre. They want to try and break away early and get the most out of that tyre possible with Baptiste Beauvoir and Salvatore Maraglino behind. Also, Adam Wilk and Coke Lopez all opting for the medium. So, Takumi Miyazono will lead the field over the timing line, followed by the Briton Adam Tosuelo. The crowd cheering here in Sydney as the Nations Cup action in Australia is about to go green. We're ready to go racing. Semi-final A is about to get underway as the field come over over the timing line for the first time and the world tour for the FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships Nations Cup is underway then Miyazono leads the field over the timing line as they head down towards the first corner all ducking and darting into the sit stream Adam Sosuelo there in second place keep an eye out as well for Randa Roosh who's trying to get the best of Mark Pinnell as they come down through into the first corner everybody trying to keep their nose 
first clean. The fortunate thing for them here is it's relatively long, that first corner, and relatively fast as well. They don't have to go hard on the brakes through there, but as they tighten up into these S's, that's where we're going to see drivers getting a bit more aggressive. As we ride on board with Miyazono, you can see the pressure that he's being put under already in the first sector of this lap by Adam Sassuolo. Despite the big old wing on the back, these things don't really have that much downforce. They move around quite a lot in the S's there. You see Adam Sassuolo now harrying uh, Takuma Miyazono in front, losing a little bit of time there for the long left-hander. These cars are very, very prone to oversteer, too uh, enthusiastic on the rail pedal, and you might end up facing the wrong way. Adam now chasing Miyazono down the hill. It's a great overtaking spot if you're feeling brave enough, but Takuma covers that nicely. He's sliding into the chicane here as we now go back up the hill. A little bit slow off exit there, I think, for Miyazono, but uh, also a little bit worse for Adam Willow, who goes wide. Meanwhile, Adam Wilk has been given a penalty there for what I assume is cutting the circuit, so we'll lose a little bit of time when he has to serve that. That's a half-second penalty there for Adam Swillow, so uh, sorry, for Adam Wilk, rather, I should say. Exactly right there, Jimmy. So he has been deemed to exceed track limits already. That's an automatic in-game penalty, uh, and that is due uh, to be served at the penalty zone. Keep an eye out for that. You'll see the yellow markers either side of the racetrack, and that is where he'll serve it. That's actually a one-and-a-half-second penalty, so clearly he's cut it more than we were expecting. Through the left-hander we go, and uh, he's getting ready to serve that as he comes over the start-finish straight to end the first lap. Here's Coque Lopez fancying a nibble on the inside, though. Side by side he comes, and the Spaniard goes through into fifth position. So that's nice and easy, pretty textbook there. Not much of a defence from Adam Wilk. Not much point, really, now with that penalty as well, because he's going to drop back uh, quite significantly in the opening stages of this one as he now begins to serve that penalty. And this is what we were expecting as well. The drivers on the hard compound of tyres, they want to get off that as soon as possible. There's no minimum tyre time that they have to be on. They can do it for one lap, they can get off it, they can get onto the mediums or the soft compound of tyres, and they will be quicker towards the closing stages of that race. Yeah, so interestingly, out of the people who have pitted, Fabian Portier in the last has gone for that soft compound of tyres, so watch out for him now. He'll be very quick on this stint, but maybe suffer a little bit later on when going on to that medium. Meanwhile, front of the field, Japanese driver defending from a British driver on board now with the Mazda RX-7, the rotary-powered machine. Watch out for those apex sills as we go around the long left hander, nice and easy. You see a little bit too aggressive on the throttle there from Willow, it meant that his exit wasn't quite as good as to come with on it, but he's got that draft down the hill. Now, to say qualified fifth, that was overall. And our drivers didn't have the choice of which race they went into. Of course, Adam opting for this one sideways there for the chicane. You take quite a lot of curb there. I think Mirzano may be a little bit too greedy on that inside curb. Of course, there is an auto track cut detection system in place here. So if you take the mick a little bit too much, you'll be slapped with a penalty. I was talking to Adam Sassuolo actually at lunchtime as well and saying, what's his strategy? He just said, follow Takuma Miyazono. That's my plan. Follow him as long as I can in this race, and I'll just do exactly what he does. If he slips up and makes a mistake, that's me into the pound seats, but uh, he's not going to try and force him into doing anything. And at the moment, he's doing exactly what he wanted to do and what he needs to do. Need to follow him a little bit too closely there. And Miyazono just kicks up a little bit of dust there, showing that he's feeding the pressure there Scrappy. from the British driver. Driver, yeah, a little bit, and this car kind of promotes that sort of driving. It's so loose when you're getting on the throttle, and when you're really pushing it to the limits. You kind of drive it sideways a little bit, which means it's a bit more spectacular for us to watch, of course, as well. But that gap, not really changing. Three temps at a line. Meanwhile, our second group behind on the medium compound tyre. Just to, for you guys watching, of course, here, and you guys watching at home, the medium compound tyre is about a second or so a lap slower than the soft compound tyre, so we will see them fall back for now. But Bear in mind, everyone has to use every compound of tyre during this race. So whilst Mirzano and Sassuolo are quick now, they won't be as quick as the race uh, unfolds. Looking back now from Mirzano for the S's, that'll be a scary sight for him. The uh, Union Jack adorned RX-7. I think it's the first time I've ever seen a Union Jack on an RX-7, actually. <laughs> yeah, probably so. Uh, Alonso Reglado, meanwhile, has made his first pit stop. He stayed out for an extra lap on the hard tyres for reasons I can't quite fathom myself at the moment, uh, and has got off of those now onto the medium tyres, but has subsequently dropped to the back of the field with everybody else having Pit, uh, pitted around him, but you can see there the top two having really broken away from Baptiste Beauvoir in third position, so Mirzono versus Sassuolo, clearly those two working together quite well, and don't forget, you can join in the conversation here tonight, hashtag FIA GTC, hashtag GT Sport on the social media channels, get in touch, let us know your thoughts on the racing here tonight, and of course, don't forget, you can also vote for your Michelin Driver of the Day here as well, hashtag Michelin FIA GTC is the hashtag, if somebody sticks out for you tonight and you want to vote them the Driver of the Day, that's how you do so. Yeah, make sure to tag Tom and let him know how good his hair looks best in here. Cheers, mate. It's good for his self-esteem. <laughs> <laughs> so coming out the hairpin then, and you see, again, this is what I'm talking about. You see they're kind of struggling there to get the power down 
coming out of the hairpin. There's about 400 horsepower or so in these uh, uh, RX-7, so they're definitely no slouch. Here we are, a great side-by-side -side here with Takuma Mia's owner in your top left, and Adam Pasquillo in your bottom left, if you if you can't read like me. <laughs> and uh, Adam there, you see the, the very similar driving style, very chill, but you see Takuma's hands a bit further up on the wheel. We call that a death grip, the Jean Alesi style death just, grip. just about to say, yeah, the, it's Jean Alesi-esque driving style. Some people say it's better for kind of wrangling a car around the circuit, not as good for precision, which maybe for this car is a good idea, to be honest, given that it is uh, quite a difficult car to drive. Now, here is uh, Adam Wilk, of course, the home driver here from Sydney itself here, uh, struggling a little bit. I think the penalty really affects him early on. You see the, the penalty he's got has dropped him right down to seventh place. If I were Adam, he might have tried to serve the penalty while pitting, might try something a little bit cheeky and try and get away with it, but I'm sure the stewards would say no to that. Well, just looking through at some of Adam's results, he finished fourth in semi-final eight of the World Tour 5 in Tokyo last year, fifth in the repertoire in Paris as well. Other than that, he's not really had much to write home about. Now, here is Perpignan Portilla doing a great move on Ray and Roux. Side by side, those two are coming. Nice. That, that's lovely. Textbook through up the inside there for Portilla. He, of course, is on the quicker compound of tyre, on the soft compound compared to Ray and on the medium, so he's got significantly more grip, and that was evident there going into that turn. Meanwhile, the front of the field, I think Adam is as close as he has been so far. He's sitting in the draft of Miozano, but as you said, he might just be following around right now, not too, uh, uh, not too bothered with trying to get past if he can around here. The thing is, over uh, following someone is easy, overtaking them is not so easy, especially if the pace is so similar. Great little picture in picture, and you can see just the wheel work going in. Now, I can tell you, though, those headphones, I wore them earlier, um, well, yesterday on my program race, you wore them earlier as well. You can barely hear a thing when you've got those on outside of the game. They're great to have on, so as, mu as loud as Tom shouts, they can't hear him. No, I couldn't hear that, but I could hear the crowd booing as you uh, <laughs> maybe into some pantomime villain here uh, for that race, Jimmy, so thanks very much for that. <laughs> Any, anyway. <laughs> because you're hard, mate. Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, back to the action. Uh, Adam Sassuolo, you can see in there, sitting in second position. Just looking through at uh, some of his results from last year. And if you look to his results, you'd think, well, how on earth is he here? Because he's not really had anything to write home about over the last year or so. I'm just looking through now, and I can see a few top five finishes, a couple of top fours, one podium he had all season in Austria. But other than that, it's not really been a good year for him. And he seems to be a little bit more calm, a little bit more focused here this time around. And that's the thing, isn't it? When you get that momentum started, it's easier to continue it. If you start off on the wrong foot, it's very easy to get into a downward spiral. I mean, Guy's a fast driver. He's, he's very quick online, but just never really uh, performed at these events. So we'll keep an eye on him, see how he does. Meanwhile, Adam Wilk into the pits, onto the soft compound of tyres. And now it's time for Adam to try and charge back and uh, gain back some of the time he lost in his first stint. Now, with his races, we tend to see people spread out in the, in the middle of the race, but the last few laps, people will come back together again, the strategies start uh, crossing over, and you tend to get quite an exciting finish. So there is the predicted tyre strategy. I can tell you now that was wrong. We defy <laughs> whoever made that graphic, because basically, you spend as long as you can on a soft compound of tyre, that's it. So really, ideally, if you can make it last, because bear in mind, there is 15 times tyre wear, so 15, uh, 15 uh, laps pretty much for one lap of driving around the circuit of tyre wear, that is, I should say. Um, if you can make it last, keep it on the car, because it'll be quicker. Yeah, you can see Alden Wilk here just being really, really careful with the his steering inputs as well, and that's important, isn't it? You've got to not wrestle that car too much. If you've got an aggressive driving style, it's not going to suit that because the tyre wear is so significant you're going to wear them out faster than others around you who perhaps might be being a little bit more smooth. You can see Wilk there just trying to be a little bit careful. As you say that, though, he ran over the kerb there and it got all sorts of out of shape. Oh, and he's been go. given a penalty as well for exceeding track limits, so he's going from bad to worse, sadly, for the local boy here tonight. Real shame, but of course, uh, the races more than one person. Greg Alardo there was defending for some reason. I can't really fathom why. Um, I think maybe he thought he was a bit closer than he was, but uh, front of the field, there you go, there's a penalty there on screen. And basically that's what you get for cutting the track around here. There are track cut penalties in place. You can't just be uh, taking chunks out of a circuit and expect not to be punished for it. And unfortunately, that's just the way uh, things go. In front there, Jose Brea getting a little bit wrong as well, the uh, Spanish car. Now, who's into the pits now? Baptiste Beauvoir going onto the hard compound of tyre. That's interesting, so that means himself, Marroquino and Coque Lopez, they're going to go onto the soft tyre for a fast finish. So watch out for these guys as we get into the closing stage of the race. I say that, actually. What we'll probably see is them just go out and come back in again and get rid of that hard compound of tyre. Well, I wonder that, though, because I'm wondering about the longevity of the soft tyres. There's Fabian Portilla, who is also on the soft tyres and has been for quite a while. So let's keep an eye out for him, because he pitted at the end of lap one, let's not forget. Salvatore Marathino in front of him, just behind his Coke Lopez. He's in a bit of a sandwich at the moment. There are the predicted tyre strategies, as you can see once again on your screen. Coming through the right-hander, here is Fabian Portilla with a face full of the Italian Salvatore Marathino. Through the right-hander they go, over the crest of the hill and coming down to go into the long left-hander. 
And is Maraclino going to be able to find his way past through into here? Sorry, is Portier going to find his way through against Maraclino? Not quite on this occasion. Tell you to keep an eye on right now is Ryan Derish. He's down in 11th place, sure, but he's made both his pit stops and Fabian Portier there, exploring the curb a little bit to try and get past Maraclino. He is on the better tyre, so he'll be looking to try and get by as quick as he can, almost driving into the back of the Italian driver. I think a little bit of a kiss there between the two. Getting a little bit too friendly, I think, for these. Uh, this is a PG-13 competition. That's been nice out there. <laughs> and now we come up the hill. Let's see if Portier can find anywhere to pass. Not really an overtaking zone here, but the hairpin coming up now is a great place to send it up the inside. You're feeling brave. What will he do? Fabian Portier late on Yanks. He goes up the inside of the Italian driver. And Fabian Portier from last on the grid is now up into fifth position. He does have a stop yet to make, though. Meanwhile, front of the field, Miazono and Adam Sussuilo are still going at it. I wonder how long they can make these soft tyres last. Let's see if they peel into the pit lane. They do. So in they come. Now, what pit, what tyre are they going to go for? They're uh, going to go for the medium tyres here and opt to the, have the hards at the end of the race, but they're going to try and do that as we would expect for one lap uh, over the course of this one. Now, is Baptiste Beauvoir going to go off the hard tyres onto the soft tyres for the closing stages of this one? Let's keep an eye out for that. Out of the pit lane comes Miazona. Now, here on the outside, you can see, of course, is Mark Pinnell, the Canadian driver who cuts oh. the nose off of Takuma Miazono. Mark Pinnell, of course, has not made his pit stop yet here so far. Miyazono slices it back through and gets back into the race lead, but that has now put a car between Miyazono and Adam Sosuilo here. That, that's going to be disastrous for Adam Sosuilo now. He's going to be held up by Mark Pinnell on a worn medium compound of tyres. He said no stops made just yet, so that's going to break the draft. It'll be a great uh, turn of luck for Miyazono. But, of course, Mark Pinnell, he's still racing as well. He does not have to let anyone through. Adam Sosuilo sending it up the inside. Contact. Was there that, contact I there? there I think there was a bit of contact going into there because the way that Pinnell went off the surface Circuit. I do wonder whether there was a bit of contact. Let's see if we can get a replay of that and see what happened. But either way, it could have been a, could have been a mistake from Mark Pinnell, but I think given the angle, yeah, yeah, there you go. colliding so with another car, and I reckon Adam's going to get the penalty from that one as Miyazono drifts it into the corner and runs it way too hot into that chicane. Yeah. Here is Wilk versus Jose Brea coming side by side down to the hairpin. The Australian on the inside, side by side, he comes through into fifth position. Lovely stuff there from Adam Wilk on the soft combat of tyres against the medium shot, Jose Brea, and now Alonso Regalado is going to try and attack against his fellow Spanish-speaking rival. Through into the right hand we go. And as we said, you can also vote for your Michelin driver of the day. Now, let's see what happened between Tosuilo and Mark Pinnell here. We're going to go on to the brakes in just a few moments. I think there was a bit of a bump. There was. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. Just. I think it was just a tiny bit. I mean, that's going to be on Adam, of course. But I think he thought he was clear. Tried to get on the brakes there. Wasn't clear. Putting him off the circuit. And that is that. So, uh, now a reminder for those at home. There's uh, Mark Gibson. Where about Mark? Uh, a reminder for those at home and those you in the audience right now, top six go through to the grand final. So maybe if you're fifth or sixth place, don't worry about it too much. Just stay where you are and you have a chance of winning this thing when we get to the grand final a bit later on today. So Mark Pennell has decided to take this opportunity to come into the pit lane. I can't really understand his strategy. I must have, maybe he was just trying to get some camera time or something. I'm not really <laughs> sure what he was doing because that's not going to be good for him. Fabian Portier coming to the pits as well to get rid of his soft tyres and going on to the mediums. And of course, because I think Mears and I actually had a little bit of a mistake um, earlier on, because uh, Swillow has now just closed right back up to the Japanese driver. Of course, there is a bit of a draft here as well. Not too much of a draft in these cars, but enough to pull you back up to someone if you are falling behind. Well, we saw Miyazono going deep into that chicane, which might have yes. lost a bit of time, and that is why Sosuilo is back through. There is an incident under investigation between Alonso Regalado and Jose Brea. Those two are running nose to tail on the circuit, and uh, you can see that Alonso Regalado is now into fourth position, Brea down into P7. So maybe there was contact between the two, which has caused him to go down the order. I think Wilkes played a bit of a blinder here, actually. I think he's going to be on that soft tyre for quite a while now, probably right to the last lap, and he's going to be putting away consistently from the guys behind him, Regalado and Derich as well. Now, here's a replay. So here was Wilk there. Here he is getting past Jose Breas, the one you saw just now, going up the inside and just using that soft combat. Look how much later he can break there. Just throws it up the inside. Thank you very much, Sonny says. Up to fifth and off to chase down the podium places. Lovely stuff there, brilliant textbook overtaking move, of course. Keep an eye out for Baptiste Beauvoir, who was in the background of your shot. He has made all of his pit stops. He is now on the final run to the chequered flag. Yes, oh no, again, just looking a little bit scrappy, oh. a little bit sideways. As you said, Jimmy, that's kind of the way you have to drive this car, but I don't know whether it's because he's under pressure from Adam to Swillow, but he just looks a little bit less comfortable than the Briton. Meanwhile, here are two Spaniards going side by side with one another, Jose Brea and Coque Lopez, squabbling for seventh position in this one. Lopez, of course, has made all of his pit stops. He's on the softer, faster compound of tyres, and Maraclino as well, ready to come through and pounce on the inside. 
And you can see Breyer there trying to find his way through on the inside. Lopez going the long way around the outside, though, on that soft tyre. Lovely move there from Coque Lopez. His next target then is uh, was going to be Alonso Regalado, but the Peruvian driver darts into the pit lane at the end of the lap. So Adam Spillo has been awarded a one-second penalty for that uh, contact with Mark Pennell you saw before. I think that's pretty much a slam dunk penalty in my eyes, so he'll have to slow down at the penalty line. Coque Lopez, though, of course, now with this overtake is now up into the top six, meaning that he will go through to the grand final. What do we expect from Mr. Consistency Lopez? I'm really concentrating on saying that word, so I don't lisp it too hard. Uh, but uh, we're watching him go around now. And there's Maraglino. Right now, if the race ended, he would be going home. So, of course, he'll be hungry to try and get past Coque Lopez in front. But dragging with him is Pierre Lenoir, the Frenchman, someone who started off so well in our World Tour events all the way back in 2018, but has not really performed since then. And Tom's going to find some stats for us now, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm just having a look through his stats uh, last year in the World Tour events, Jimmy. And again, you're absolutely right. Nothing to write home about. He was only at two of them. And in the world, finally, he finished in ninth position in semi-final B. Other than that, the only other thing that is worth mentioning is a fourth-place finish at the Repercharge, and it's not hit off on the right foot here for Pierre Lenoir, whether he's perhaps just struggling with the car, struggling with the whatever it might be. It's great to have him here. You can see our Italian commentators, passionate as ever, as they see Salvatore Maritlino squabbling with Coque Lopez at four position. Lopez going defensive, Maritlino opting to try and get better drive out of the corner and find his way past the Spaniard. Not close enough on this occasion, but certainly signaling his intentions very much, and this, of course, as you said, Jimmy, is for the final spot in the grand final tonight for the Nations Cup. Now, a reminder, of course, that our first and second place drivers are still yet to make their last pit stop. So they're going to have to get that done. The gaps are going to come right down, and we're going to have a fantastic scrap to the line, I think, at this point. But when do they stop? They're going to try and stop as late as possible, so we'll probably see him come in on lap 12 or 13. Meanwhile, Coque Lopez being drafted by Salvatore Maraglino, coming down to T1 here. Now we go back to third position. Adam Wilk has, I think, lost that to Baptiste Beauvoir, the French driver, someone, again, who showed some great improvement last year. But uh, Wilk is still yet to make a stop as well. So. Right now, I think maybe it's not looking good for the Australian driver. Through into the left-hander there for Adam Wilk, of course, as you said, Jimmy has got to make that pit stop. He's got a lot of faster drivers behind him on that soft tyre already. So he's going to be a bit of a sitting duck here, Wilk, and he has had those two penalties over the course of this race as well. Two and a half seconds in total, it equates to in penalties, so it has not been an easy ride for the Australian driver. He will need some luck and somebody to make a mistake around him to try and capitalise on that in the closing stages of this one. Fewer than three laps now remain as we ride on board with him, coming down in towards this hairpin, uh, sorry, to this chicane, I should say, rather. And you can see there just the car looking so unsettled on corner entry, but it's just a brilliant spectacle to watch as well. Coque Lopez then coming through the chicane. You see how sideways he gets through there, just trying to get on the power and get rid of Maraglino, trying to uh, lose the toe through there. And we come up now through the chicane up to the hairpin. This is one of the best overtaken spots on the circuit in the background. Pierre Lenoir and Mark Pinel going side by side. Mark there on the fresher soft compound attire, so he's really harrying the Frenchman. So again, this is the fight for survival. This is the fight for the last slot in the grand final coming up after this, or after the uh, next semi-final, we should say. Great view here from Marquina, hopping over the curves and then just trying to get the car settled on exit there. So much power there to deliver to these sport uh, compound tyres that the car does struggle on full throttle. There is Marquina looking very, very concentrated. And you see there, he's one of those guys. That's right, he drives from a chase cam. <laughs> People are going to give him a little bit of stick for that, I imagine, that but whatever works, works. It seems to be working through very nicely here so far. And, uh, well, Lewis Hamilton drives from the chase cam. He's a six-time Formula One world champion. So yeah, well, I think there, there that's the argument there closed, isn't it? I tell you what, though, we've got Spanish and Italian commentators here at the moment it's going to be a Spanish or Italian driver that's going to be going through into uh, this final well that of course is not encountering for Adam Wilk who's going to make his final pit stop which could of course change the uh, situation somewhat I was going to say I'm glad they're in a soundproof booth oh, yeah. <laughs> otherwise you'd be, able, you'd be able to hear them over us to be honest and very passionate guys there of course that's why they're here we all love and have the opportunity to, to commentate on these events Marabina looking to the outside now so that's going to work Sun gives it a go he's still there He's still managing to keep the car there, just about has to give up there. 
on the exit, and Coca Lopez will keep the place for now. There are our Spanish commentators. It's like being at the zoo, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no feeding the wildlife. Yeah, don't, don't feed the commentators. You see Coca Lopez just glancing to his right hand side in the mirror there, just coming across to take his racing line. And I think there are sigh of relief from the, Italian com uh, the Spanish commentators, and they're the Italian right next door, of course, as well. Again, we are live in seven different languages here today, so if you don't like the English stream, you can go check out one of the others. Maraclino looking up the inside. Oh, there's a little bit of side to side rubbing there. Coco Lopez with a terrible run out of Chicane. He's on the inside, though, for the hair, but he might be able to keep the place. He's hanging on in there. And have a slow run on the exit, though, having to take a more uh, shallower line. And they're now side by side. There he is. Pops out to the right hand side of your screen. Next corner is a right hander. And Maraclino is just about going to keep the position. P6, a nice move there from Maraclino, but wide there. Yeah. Wide, yeah. And then, where is he? There he is, Coke Lopez alongside now for the last corner, and Maragino shuts the door. But no, Coke Lopez <laughs> gives it one more go. Now, importantly, Miyazano and Adam Susquillo have come in for their hard compound attire. Where will that put them when they come out the pit exit? Well, the thing is, everybody else has been on soft tyres. They've been able to set fast lap times here. They're on the soft tyres now to the end of this race. And whilst they've been on mediums, they're going to come out. They're out of position. This Bravois. has been a disaster. And now Beauvoir has pulled a blinder, and he leads the way as Takuma Miyazano slots back into second. Adam Swillow is going to be down in P5 by the looks of things. Adam Wilk has also made his final pit stop. That does allow Coke Lopez up into P6, you can see there as well. But Beauvoir, being on the soft tyres for a longer stint, was able to just set consistent lap times out there on his own on the circuit, and it has given him the race lead after Miyazono and Adam Sosuelo pitted. So the strategy here is all about using the soft tyre when you have a free space on the circuit and you aren't busy fighting for position, because whenever you're doing that, you're just losing a ton of time and Baptiste Beauvoir there has managed just to play that to perfection. I tell you what, Adam Sosuelo's just lost out to Coke Lopez for P6, and he's not too far ahead of Mark Pinnell, who's on the soft tyres for uh, that position. Oh, but he's going to make another pit stop. Lenoir, Lenoir is yeah, yeah, that, that Sosuelo. So Mark Pinnell has to come in and take a pit stop, but uh, Lenoir behind on the soft compound attire might be able to do something here. But that's the thing, we have just over a lap and a half to go. So now Adam Sosuelo, who was fighting for the lead for the pit stop, is now fighting for survival here in the first semi-final event here at Sydney. Miyazono seemingly able to keep into the top six for now, though he will have Ray and Darish behind and Salvatore Maraglino. Look at the background, the snake of cars behind us. All the gaps have come right back down now as the tyre strategies have come into play. There is Miyazono going a little bit wide there on that hard compound of tyre, just trying to keep things lit on the exit. Manages to do so for now. Darish there, not quite close enough to do anything at the moment, but coming on now to the last lap. It's do or die for Adam Sosuelo down in six. I think he might just be about safe, only just, because Pierre Lenoir's got uh, 1.7 seconds to Mark Pinnell in front, and then, of course, uh, he's got another uh, two seconds to make up. Over the timing line we go, though, Ran de Roos there in third position. So this could be a double French podium in semi-final A. That's a very exciting prospect. Our French commentators uh, broadcasting live from London. So hello to uh, Donald Reginald and Pierre-Olivier Vallette. They are our French commentators for 2019. You can see Rand Arouche is getting a little bit sideways, but they'll be beaming from ear to ear back in base in London if this podium finishes as it is. And, well, I tell you what, Beauvoir and Darouche have had some brilliant calls of strategy in the past, and it has proved to be the case here in semi-final A. It's put them in a really, really strong place. It has, yeah. It's been a race of strategies. Well, not too much on-track action, unfortunately, for us here. But in terms of strategy, if you're there at home, you're probably having a great time thinking, oh, this is like chess, it is. I'm enjoying this. It's uh, one of those sort of races. But I'll tell you who's played it to perfection. Baptiste Beauvoir, there he is right now. He's uh, got 3.6 seconds to that man, Miyazano, in your picture down the bottom left, and he's just cruising at this point, just taking it easy. He's got a very interesting driving position here. He sits bolt upright in the seat, like he's, uh, of course, there concentrating. It must be so difficult with all those cameras in his face. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, envy him there. But, of course, the fight now for third, fourth, and fifth is still going strong. Coke Lopez looks to the inside. No, decides better of it. You guys are all through at this point. Don't do anything rash. Adam Willow just about holding on there on the hard tyre. Of course, these soft compounder tyres are all very worn at this point. So the hard compounder tyre, it seems, is the tyre to be on. But Ryan Derich there third, Maraglino fourth, Coca Lopez fifth, Willow there in sixth place. That looks like it's how it's going to finish, Tom. So it's coming down in towards that final corner. So Swillow a little bit wide there in the background. Derouche going defensive. Maraglino trying to go through on the inside. Coco Lopez then on the outside. Maraglino into fourth place. Coco Lopez very close. But Baptiste Beauvoir, what a brilliant strategy call. What a brilliant race from the Frenchman. And he wins semi-final A for the Nations Cup for World Tour 1 here in Sydney. Second place goes to Takuma Miyazono. And Ryan Derouche just holds on. 
to take third place ahead of Salvatore Maraclino and Coque Lopez. Sosuilo gets through by the skin of his teeth there as well in P6. Portilla, we hardly mentioned him over the course of that one, but very impressive from the Chilean driver to finish in P7. And you can see the two Frenchmen embracing one another down there. And uh, Coque Lopez, well, he won't be too dissatisfied with that result. It wasn't quite a top three finish, but He's nonetheless, through. he is through. It's true, that's, that's what matters here, getting that top six result. Of course, there is a little bit of a change when we come to uh, Grand Final later on. It might uh, uh, change things, but of course, later on, the reveal. Aston Martin, DBR9, all you ever wanted to know. We're going to do a little segment of this, of this new car coming to GT Sport very shortly, coming up later on. I'm really excited for that. It's going to be uh, very interesting to see how uh, you get on. Oh, Aston yeah. Martin, DBR9, the pressure. Jimmy Brubeck. The pressure's coming, of course. Uh, the mistake has given me another rig to have a go in, but we'll see how it goes, of course. But it's really nice to see uh, a win for Baptiste Beauvoir. I'd say that maybe he's another driver who comes very close a lot of the time, so this will be a great start for him. Of course, he's still got a do, the, do the, the business in the grand final, but this is a great way to start. Well, what about Takuma Mia's owner there as well? We thought he had that one in the bag for a very, very long time, up until he made that pit stop, and he'd been on the medium compound of tyres for such a long time uh, that it cost him, ultimately, the race lead when he came out of the pit lane. Here is the race start. You can see Mia's owner there looking pretty calm and cool as he normally does. Here's Fabian Portia getting his elbows out early doors, trying to find his way past against Salvatore Maraclino. It's brilliant racing up and down, and you can see there him jabbing away at the wheel, trying to find some grip and some traction. And this is where the pit stops made things quite interesting because Mark Pinnell really upset the apple cart here. I mean, Zona was able to find his way past with relative ease, but then it uh, allowed uh, him to just pull away a little bit, put a bit of distance in between himself and Adam Sassuolo. There's Adam Wilk going down in towards the chicane. Jose Brea in and amongst the mix there as well. Here is Salvatore Maraclino on the offensive against Coque Lopez. Side by side they went. Maraclino found his way through Coque Lopez. Not too far adrift though, and giving it as good as he got. You can see the serious expression on his face. Now this is what decided the race there for Miazono and Sassuolo on the medium tires, came out of it, and it allowed Baptiste Beauvoir, who was on the soft compound of tires, to just romp into the lead. Yeah, strategy is everything. And of course, Baptiste just, just played it perfectly and comes across the line there. Took his, I think that's his first win in one of these races. Tommy, who there'll be across some stats here somewhere, but uh, I think I've seen him win before. He's very happy of it. And of course, congratulated by his uh, uh, country at Ray and Derich as well. So here are the semi-final standings. Of course, uh, Beauvoir first, Mirzano second, Derich third, Maraglino fourth, Lopez fifth, and Adam Sassuolo taking that last slot in the grand final. Fabian Portia, a valiant effort for him uh, in seventh, Lenoir eighth, Regalado ninth, Breyer tenth, Wilk eleventh, and Mark Pinnell in twelfth, meaning, of course, those guys are going home. Now, a new addition to this year is that World Tour points are being awarded at each event. So the first in our grand final will get three points, second two points, and third one point. Meaning if you do well at one of these World Tour events, you are in good standing for the World Final a bit later on this year. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, it's crucial to remember that because it adds a little bit more emphasis on the uh, World Tour events, of course, in uh, 2020. Uh, one thing to mention is that is Baptiste Beauvoir's first win since the Repechage race in Austria for World Tour 4 go. last year. And Julia is over with him now. Y yes, I am. How do you feel, Baptiste? Give a round of applause. Yeah, I'm very happy, very happy. Yeah. I didn't expect I can make uh, a great result like this. Uh, yeah, just happy. Uh, I did a good strategy, uh, so congrats to the top six. And uh, yeah, let's uh, watch the second uh, semi-final. Um, so did you have your kind of tyre strategy planned out from the start? Did you stick to it? Did you change it? Yeah, I wanted to start with the medium tyre because on this track it's easily, pretty easily to follow with the slipstream. Mm -hmm. And uh, for three laps, I can I have follow uh, Miyazono and Sosuelo uh, with the medium tire. So I say in my head, yeah, that's good. I got a good pace, I think. So this, at the end, um, I got this, with the soft tire. Uh, I already know I'm going to overtake uh, Miyazono and Sosuelo. Okay. So as you're going to go forward, who do you think is your biggest competition? Who are you most worried about racing against? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this competition. I love Gran Turismo. Uh, it's uh, just an amazing, uh, an amazing competition for me. It's a very good opportunity. And uh, yeah, no, sorry, I'm just happy. No, you know. no, he's, he's very happy. Give him a big round of applause. He did amazingly well. Let's throw it back to Tom and Jimmy. Oh, nice one there, Julia. Great to see Baptiste Beauvoir with a big smile on his face. Had. Uh, 
a challenging time, I think it's fair to say, towards the end of 2019, but for uh, finishing on the podium in the uh, World Final. But good to see him performing quite well. Yeah, it'll be a big confidence boost for him, for sure. And of course, he still has the, the main word for doing the grand final, but what a way to start. Now, we saw just a few moments ago the Aston Martin mm. DBR9. That's a brand new car coming to GT Sport in the very near future. And I believe you're going to show us a bit more about it. That's right. It's not often I get a chance to embarrass myself in front of hundreds of people. But now is my opportunity. So what we're going to do is take our new car for a lap of Brands Hatch. So get in my rig and put the seat forward because I'm very short. There you go. And we are at Brands Hatch GP in the Aston Martin DBR9. There you go. It's a nice look at it here now in our chase cam, in the golf colours, why not? So, Aston Martin DBR9, GT1 car, famous for its wins at the Mon in 2007 and 2008, makes its way to GT Sport very shortly. 600 horsepower, give or take, rear wheel drive, of course, and given it's a GT1 car from a few years ago, um, not quite as much downforce as a modern Group 3 car, a modern uh, GT3 car. It is, of course, going to be balanced to run in the, uh, the Group 3 series, but in this, uh, we have the raw, untapped, version. Now, I've got, uh, I've got TC off, so I've got to be nice and careful, otherwise I might make a fool of myself, or well, more than usual anyway. Coming up now to 30. Now, this is where the car really feels like a GT1 car. You, start, you get a little bit of understeer there on exit, because not quite much, uh, uh, as much aero as a modern car. Coming up now towards Hawthorns, which is a really fun corner, but you approach it very quickly. 600 horsepower gets you up to speed a bit quicker than you imagine. Turning in, and again showing why I don't actually... Uh, compete at these events. Not quite as fast as our guys here. I'm sure we're going to see a much better run of this a bit later on. Now coming down to this awesome back end of the circuit here. Of course, 007 on the hood there. About as cool as you can get. The only bad thing about this car right now is it's not in British Racing Green, which I think is an absolute crime against humanity. The Queen's going to come break my legs if I'm not careful. Coming now down to the last part of the course, down to Clearways. Again, letting that V12 sing see how bad my lap time is. Now, guys, here's an opportunity at home for you guys to get involved and see just how much better you are than me. Coming down to the start-finish line now, and the time is a 128.5. So, challenging car, bit challenging for me. Show me how much better you guys are than me. Oh. There well, you go. That's how you do it, isn't it? Glad it's not me doing that. Nice one, there. No, I saw, I saw your effort earlier on, mate. I'm glad it wasn't you as well. Uh, yeah, I just like drifting. That's my problem. <laughs> Going sideways, flat out and sideways. Nice job, though. Did well. Uh, anyway, we mentioned Igor Frogger just a few moments ago, of course, and uh, mm. he was crowned the 2020 Toyota Racing Series Champion of New Zealand. Huge congratulations to our man. There you go. You can see him down there celebrating, and uh, we saw his father as well and uh, embracing him on the uh, live stream as we were watching it, all huddled around this really, really small laptop. And it is great <laughs> to see that uh, connection between uh, digital motorsport at Real World Motorsport and great to see Igor progressing up that motorsport ladder uh, from starting here in Gran Turismo. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's my firm belief that sim racing will play a similar role to something like karting. You know, I think it does that at the moment. And Igor is just fantastic proof of that. Again, just to reiterate, we were all just sitting around a very small mobile phone, loads of us there, and as soon as he went over the line, big cheer went up, and it was a very big community thing. GT, Gran Turismo is a massive family, and to be part of it, it really does mean a lot. And yeah, congratulations, Igor. I'm super happy for you, mate. Now, Brands Hatch, we just saw it a few moments ago. We saw your very impressive lap time. You made that look quite easy. It's almost like you do it for a living. It wasn't easy. I was very scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made it look easy. Anyway. <laughs> now, Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit based in Longfield in Kent. It's a circuit that needs no introduction. Used to play host to the British Grand Prix back in the 1980s. The drivers here today, though, are going to be competing in the Aston Martin DBR9s on racing hard, medium and soft compound of tyres. At 17 laps for them to drive. Two times fuel consumption, nine times tyre wear. You can see a rolling start for them and you can see the penalty line there indicated just out of turn eight heading in towards turn nine that's the one of the fastest parts of the lap as you come down the drop in towards t9 so bear that in mind now here is the tire strategy yeah we're thinking that we're going to see seven laps out on the of the soft compound of tire and seven laps of medium with three only for that hard compound again the game is to get off the harder compounds as quick as you can and spend as long as you can on the soft compounds and as we saw from baptiste Beauvoir in the first race it's all about when you use the tires if you can use the tire uh, when you have a bit of free space to yourself, and that's the best time to use it. And you see Baptiste earlier saying, I used the slipstream a bit more with the medium. So, again, 
car positioning also comes into play. And also, this is a very narrow circuit. Mm. That's something worth bearing in mind. It doesn't necessarily lend itself to side-by-side -side racing that much just because of the way that the circuit runs. So it's going to make things quite interesting to see how they're going to get their elbows out, muscle their way past, and the usual passing places on a more traditional modern circuit are not so uh, easy on this uh, old-school racetrack. No, especially when you're coming through the second sector, coming up through Sheen, that kind of off camber right-hander. Very easy to get, uh, get it wrong through there and have a little bit of and off. So, of course, we have our Chileans here today. We have Nico Rubla, who won yesterday in the Manufacturers Series. I think that uh, graphic was made before then, saying he's cooling <laughs> off a little bit. He's won a World Tour event, though, but didn't reach the podium in any other final after that. Fabian Portia, on the other hand, has never reached a final at a World Tour event, and unfortunately, that's, that continues here. Well, we're ready then to get semi-final B underway for the Nations Cup of the 2020 FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships. Let's see who is going to emerge on top and qualify for the grand final here tonight. So then the drivers all lined up in the brand new Aston Martin DBR9. It's Jonathan Wong who lines up on pole position. He was the fastest man of the lot yesterday. Cody Nikola Lukowski from Australia. Huge cheer from him for the crowd here tonight. Rick Kevelan lines up in P3 at the head of the second row of the grid. And alongside Rick, it is Danny Solis, the American driver. Good to see him back out and looking very competitive as well. Tatsuya Sugawara from Japan. A lot of support for him here tonight as well. Okay. Alongside him is Patrick Blajan. Nicholas Rubelar is in P7, the Chilean driver. And then in eighth position, it is Manuel Rodriguez, the Spaniard. Can he do a good a job as Coque Lopez, his countryman, did last time around? Benjamin Barda lines up P9. Alongside him is Matt Simmons, the Australian driver. Again, a lot of support for him here tonight. The final row of the grid is headed by Valerio Gallo, the Italian. Stunning looking livery on that car, I must say. And Cy Bishop, the Kiwi, with the All Blacks livery, lines up in P12. Now, a rolling start for these drivers here, Jimmy. Heading down towards Paddock Hill, Ben, what are you expecting? I tell you what, I want a rolling start on this car with all the power underneath your right foot. Here we are then, Jonathan Wong will come out of here. He is our hot pit for the race. He was so fast yesterday in qualifying. In fact, our quickest qualifier of the race, uh, of the qualifying yesterday, which means he had the pick of this one. So if anyone's going to beat him, it might be Cody behind. But Cody's starting on the medium compound attire, interestingly, with Rhett Kevlin behind on the soft. So Cody's going to have to do some defending in this first. It may be going to try and use the draft to stay with Jonathan. And one thing you must bear in mind, of course, is the soft compound tyres. You'd expect those to be quicker uh, in the early stages of this race. If you're on the medium compound of tyres, you should drop back a little bit. We'll see how the status quo does work out for these drivers, though. But it's Jonathan Wong who will lead the field over the timing line, followed by Cody Nikola Lukowski here at the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. Semi-final B for the Nations Cup is about to get underway. Hold on to your hats and who is going to emerge on top and qualify for the grand final here tonight in Australia. Semi-final B, though, for the Nations Cup is underway as the field lead the way down towards the first corner. Jonathan Wong immediately tries to Break out an advantage. You can see Kendall Lukowski going on the defensive against Rick Kevlin as they come down through Paddock Hill Bend. Now into Drubis. This is the first overtaking opportunity. Lots of aggressive moves being made. Danny Sol is on the offensive there. Tatsuya Sugawara also trying to find his way through. And you can see Blajan has made some progress. He's now into P5 ahead of Sugawara. Into Graham Hill Bend we go. Lots of drivers running wide and taking liberties with the track limits. But everybody making it relatively cleanly through those first couple of corners. And John from Wong absolutely storming off in the lead. He's already got a second gap at the moment, very much signalling his intentions for the rest of this race. Cody Nikola Lukowski in second. Now the Aussie driver acting as a bit of a cork in the bottle in that medium compound of tyres. He's going to do his best to keep these guys behind him at the moment. There is Sugawara. He's on the soft compound as well, so making his way through the pack at the moment. In the background there, that's Nico Rublar trying to uh, invent something, going through the right hand. That's not going to happen through there. Now we come through the second sector, very narrow through this part. Here's Cody through Sheen Curve. Watch out for that grass on the left-hand side. Very very easy to dip a wheel into that if you're being a little bit too aggressive and now we come up to clear ways to round off the first lap already an instant being under investigation Tom I wonder if uh, any drivers on the hard tyres are going to pit at the end of this first lap they must use all three compounds of tyre however there is nothing to say that they have to use them for more than one lap in this race so let's keep an eye on Nicholas Rublar the first driver on the hard tyres and you can see Matt Simmons Valerio Gallo Cy Bishop do come into the pit lane there Matt Simmons and Valerio Gallo onto the soft tyres Bishop 
and Rodriguez onto the medium tyres. Solis and Sugawara also under investigation at the start of lap two. Now, Cody's doing a great job here of keeping these uh, these guys behind. Now, the medium compound of tyres about a second of that, maybe eight tenths of that slower than the soft compound of tyres. So there's a lot less grip from the cars chasing him right now. So keeping them behind is a hell of a job there from the Aussie Sugawara. They're just diving up the inside of Rick Kevelham, almost tags the Dutch driver in front, but uh, slots back in behind now, coming down Pilgrim's Drop, using the draft here to try and gain on the back there. V12 powered Aston Martin. You can't get more British than that on Brands Hatch 2. I'm swelling with national pride as we come through Hawthorns there. Just off the front, you can see the telemetry there in the bottom right-hand corner. But what's the inputs? A lot of break into here. Very confident on the throttle one exit there, slamming it in almost. And now we come up to Sheen Curve. Oh, well, getting a little bit out of shape there. It's going to be careful on exit there, Sugawara. You can see just how on edge these cars are through there. I love watching his old GT1. So much more movement than modern cars. It's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? You can see there no incident, uh, no further investigation, I should say, for Solis and Sugawara for that incident between them. Going through the right hander, but riding on board now with Sugawara, who's got a good drive out of clearways and coming over the brow of the hill onto the start finish straight. He's isn't really a straight, you can see there, they're always ducking and diving and moving their way through. Here comes Sugawara diving down the inside of Rick Kevelham, side by side they come through Paddock Hill Bend, heading down towards Druids we go, and Sugawara San is through into third place. That is brilliant from the Japanese driver. Now his next target is going to be the medium compound shot, Cody Nikola Lakovsky. If that aggression is anything to go by, he should get that done hopefully nice and quickly. Let's see now, already onto the back of uh, Cody as we come up now towards 13. throws it up the inside, my word, that was an absolute send there from a Japanese driver, stops it on the exit, and just like that, he's through. What a drive there, and now he'll do his best to try and chase down Jonathan Wong. He's already got a three-second gap in front at the moment, so it's going to be difficult to try and gain that back in. That's on pace alone, and Nico Rubelai has been given a five-second penalty for ignoring pit lane lines. Now, it's a very strict rule that was given to all of the drivers before starting this. That is, if you do not respect the pit entry lines, you will be given a five-second penalty. There's something Nico Rubelai has broken that rule. Dear, oh dear. So, from the high of yesterday and winning the manufacturer series to the low point of semi-final B down in ninth position and being hit with a five second penalty that is uh, well a disappointing set of circumstances for the Chilean driver and he's gonna have a hell of a job to try and overhaul his race from this point onwards but stranger things have happened in motor racing and they usually do he serves that penalty now and he's gonna drop quite significantly far back off the rest of the field it does promote Cy Bishop uh, up off the back of uh, the field as well now for the first time and he we spoke to him earlier on he said well I'm sorry from the back I can only go forwards and he has finally at least done that now then Rick Kevlum we ride on board with him down through Graham Hill Bend he's all over the back of Cody Nicola Lukowski as he comes through trying to find his way past is the Dutch driver he played a game of Skittles last year he's the most recognizable incident if you remember him in oh, one yes. of the races <laughs> in the uh, Jaguar uh, Vision Gran Turismo cars that we saw but seems to have just refocused himself a little bit here for 2020 looking a bit calmer a bit more composed and crucially a bit quicker as well I'm gonna say while he's not one you think I think he has the award for the world's first awarded red flag in a GT Sport competition world tour so yeah he's got that to his name at least but uh, Cody's doing a very good job here it's quite uh, easy to overlook him of course he's falling back a little bit compared to the guys in front but he is on the slower compound of tyre can't stress that enough and the more he's able to stay with these guys now the more advantage he'll have later on when it's his turn on the soft tyre, which it makes me think, I wonder when he's actually going to pit in and take that. I see, well, Jonathan Wong's absolutely flown away with this one at the start of this race. 3.2 seconds his gap sits at uh, as we come on to the start of lap number five, and that is hugely impressive for him. Just to give you an idea of his lap times, 1 minute 22.894 was it last time around, as Tatsuya Sugawara came over the timing line on the, also on the soft tyres, a 123.127. He's only three tenths of a second a lap faster. Meanwhile, back to the action on track, Cody Lukowski going defensive against Rick Kevelham who tries to go the long way around the outside now if he could hold it through there he'd have a good run and a good line down to Graham Hill Bend now he gets a little bit out of shape oh, but wow. he's got good drive going through there that is very opportunistic for Rick Kevelham and he slots himself into third place I think at this point this is where Cody needs to think right how long do I want to be on these tyres for now because I'm starting to fall back into the other medium runners Patrick Blajan there as well he drove fantastically in the world final in Monaco in the, in the grand final anyway at least just a shame that uh, that drive if you excuse the pun didn't come but in a few races earlier, but this is the man who is, was just mind-bendingly quick when we first met him back at the Nürburgring in 2018, but has just not been able to uh, kind of renew that uh, that speed since then. We're on board right now, the Hungarian driver, coming from the second
from Barbara Circuit. You can see just how little room there is for air around here. There are some curves, but they aren't very wide. If you uh, if you go a little bit too aggressive into a corner, you can very easily end up kicking up the dust as Cody does an exit there. I squirm a little bit whenever I see that. It's so easy to lose a car at that point. The uh, the front the Outside tyres are loaded, and when you then put it onto the grass, they just want to just slide away from you, and that's that. Keep an eye, by the way, guys, on Matt Simmons in eighth place. He's made one stop on the soft compound tyre. He's currently catching this group you're seeing on screen at the moment. So this is basically him using his soft compound tyre in free air, doing what Baptiste Beauvoir did in the last race, and you know how that ended for the Frenchman. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was uh, very impressive from Baptiste Beauvoir. Look at this speed that they have to just drop off going into Druids. I tell you, I'm pretty familiar with Grand Tats, but only on a motorcycle, uh, sadly. It's a little bit different compared to these Group One, uh, these Group 3 cars in the GT1 uh, Aston Martin DBR9. So you're used to picking up the bike, aren't you, Tom? Yeah, normally, and breaking bones, basically. <laughs> That's my aim for next weekend, is to not break anything. Jonathan Wong, though, well, it's so hard to overstate how impressive his first stint has been on that soft compound of tyre. He needed to get a clean break out in front. That's exactly what he's done. 3.8 seconds up the road of anybody else, and lapping consistently quicker. Could he be your Michelin driver of the day? You can vote using the hashtag MichelinFIAGTC on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Maybe somebody else will put in a stronger performance, but get voting, and we'll be talking to them on the extra lap show straight after the end of our Nations Cup broadcast here tonight. That's right, and uh, of course I'll be hosting that. Whoa! Sugawara! Sugawara has done what I said it's so easy to do around here. Just caught the grass. Masterful recovery there from the Japanese driver. That's enough for a, to warrant a change of underwear, I think, from Sugawara, but he's managed to keep it facing the right way. But now he has lost a little bit of time to the train behind him, of course, but uh, most importantly, still in the race and still facing the right way. I can just see Takuma Miyazone from our commentary position, mate, and I've just seen him pumping on his heart saying, God, dear, I think he's just, just given uh, uh, Miyazone there, sorry, I should say, rather, a bit of a colliery. Now, here's the moment that happened on the white line, a little bit on the grass, masterful recovery from Sugawara. Impressive stuff. I thought he'd looped it round, so apologies if I gave anybody a bit of a fright there. I think I'm going to have to change my microphone after that. Yeah, you one. gave me a fright. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, looking back, you can see what that's done now. That's, that would have worn the tyres being sideways like that. So you don't want an unnecessary wear on this soft compound tyre, especially with the tyre wear multiplier being at times nine. So that would have really hurt his tyres, which is why he's now dropped back. Danny Solis right now, he's still in contention, the American driver, someone who's been improving massively over the course of the last few events. Right now, if things were to end, he'd go through. Again, a little reminder, if you've just tuned in. First of all, hello, where have you been? And secondly, top six drivers go through to the grand final, and everyone else goes home. Right now, that's Banner, Simmons, Gallo, Bishop, Rodriguez, and Rubelar. But we still have a lot of pit stops to make, so everything can change. Down through into the sheen curve we go. And I, one thing I love about this circuit, being as old school as it is, Jimmy, is that you don't see tarmac runoffs at Brands Hatch mm. traditionally. You've got grass, you've got gravel, you've got danger wherever you look. And that is what makes it very exciting. There's Rick Kevlum coming into the pit lane from P5 as well. He's on the soft, goes onto the mediums. Ah. Danny Solis does the reverse of that strategy from mediums onto softs. Are they going to take any uh, fuel on board here at this stage? I don't think they're going to need to worry about fuel consumption too much here, as it's not too much in uh, full throttle um, over the course of this lap because the straights aren't particularly long at Brands Hatch, but it's just worth one of those things bearing in mind. However, Sugawara um, has dropped back, of course, following that moment he had. He's now 5.1 seconds behind the race leader, Jonathan Wong. I think it's maybe time for Sugawara to come into the pit lane and get rid of those soft compound tyres. It will hurt him to do that, of course, given that the tyre is a little bit quicker. And you see in there, there's the projected tyre strategy. But look, we're on lap eight and they're on soft, so throw that one out. Go on, get rid of it. There you go, thank you very much. <laughs> we'll get rid of that. Um, but Jonathan Wong, at the moment, he's just showing what you can do on these soft compound tyres. If you keep them alive, if you respect them, there is a certain uh, level of uh, time management which is important to these events. It's, it's really walk, walking a tightrope. Do you push the car and go for out and out speed? Or do you maybe save a couple of attempts to lap and save those tyres so you can keep that speed a bit longer? It really is just one of the many factors that come into racing around here and being a successful driver. So Cody Nikolikovsky, he had dropped back, of course, on that medium tyres. Patrick Blagen doing a good job of keeping him honest, albeit doing a good job of trimming the grass on the outside of the sheen curve there as well. Now, Jonathan Wong, the race leader, does come into the pit lane. So, on the end of lap eight, he goes onto the medium tyres here. 
And what is everybody else around him going to do? Sugawara comes into the pits as well. He goes onto the medium tyres as well from oh, the okay. softs. Lakovsky going onto the hard combat of tyres, as is Blazer. Now, are they going to do what everybody else did? Get on those for a lap, get off them, and get on the soft tyres for the closing uh, seven laps in this race? That's very interesting. I think they're going to both... Yeah, there you go. They've come out on the train. Matt Simmons, there, the Aussie driver, going around the outside of Patrick Blazer on pit exit. He's up now to P7. And now chasing down his countryman, Rick Kevlar and Sugawara now uh, come to blows, coming through Druids. A little bit wide goes Kevlar, and Sugawara is back up into third place. They were very close for a second there. Sugawara, of course, struggling big time on those tyres. Danny Solis, uh, again, looking, uh, exploring the track limits in the background. But he's up to fifth position on the soft compound of tyre. For Danny Solis, the American now, he has to try and get by Kevlar and Sugawara as quick as he possibly can, because those tyres are going to be uh, wearing pretty much instantaneously as he comes out the pit lane. There is the view there from Rick Kevlar for a second there. He gets very close there to the Japanese driver. And look at Danny Solis, the difference in grip in that soft compound of tyre. It's great to watch, but now all the time he's stuck there, he's losing time, important time in that soft compound. The problem with Brand Satch is it's so narrow, there's just no way to find your way past in this back section of the lap. It's almost uh, similar in a way in its narrowness to the mountain uh, at Mount Panorama and you can see there that he's not able to find his way past maybe going into the final corner uh, in towards turn 12 of clearways he could find his way through or perhaps down in towards turn one of Paddock Hill Bend there's only a few overtaking opportunities really here at Brands Hatch Paddock Hill Bend Graham Hill Bend something along the lines of that could be an opportunity for him Benjamin Bardo into the pits from the mediums to the hard compound of tyres Lakovsky in as well and Matt Simmons as is Blajan and Valerio Gallo so they all make their pit stops. Lukowski and Blajan onto the soft tyres, as is Cy Bishop and Matt Simmons and Valeria Gallo onto the mediums, respectively, as well. Now, this is going to be where it all comes together. Now, we have Cody, we have Matt, we have Patrick, we have Valeria and we have Cy Bishop. They've all made their stops, so they now can just drive to the end. And Matt Simmons there, just going around the outside, Patrick Blajan. That's very important for him, but he is in that medium compound now, is Matt Simmons. So he's going to be a little bit slower than the cars behind. Meanwhile, Danny Solis all over the back of Rick Kevlar coming up towards Hawthorne. not using overtaking opportunity, but he's going to give it a go. Looks up the inside, he might have to back out of this one. No, he sends it up the inside, asserts his dominance there. On, through on Rick Kevlum and up to third he goes. He's absolutely sent that there, and that's not really a place to overtake usually, but he made it work, didn't he? Well, he must be carrying some uh, ballast in that car, Danny Solis, in the form of some serious cojones after that move, because that was very <laughs> aggressive indeed from the American driver, but he made it work. I tell you what, though, Cody Lukowski might have pulled a bit of a blinder here, Jimmy, because he's come out on the soft compound of tyres, but he's got a bit of a gap to Nicholas Rubelar in front. That's going to just allow him a bit of a lap to uh, send it a bit and uh, just set some faster lap times in clear air, not be in the dirty air, the turbulence air, and just be on his own for a bit. That's what you need on these soft tyres. Right, here's a replay. You see just uh, just got a little bit there on the brakes, put his car on the rear quarter panel. Rick would have known he was there at that point. And it's either turn in or crash. So Rick said, OK, I'll let him go, and that was it. So here's Cody, as you said, Tom, really good spot. He's got quite a lot of space in front of him now. Of course, let us know what you think of the event so far. Uh, if I, uh, hashtag FIA GTC. Again, let us know how nice Tom looks. Isn't he pretty today? Look at him. It's all the makeup, mate, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty warm under it. I mean, <laughs> I, I, there's, it's an interesting comparison to my face and my arm here. Not quite the same shade. <laughs> I think it's added about three kilos to my weight, given how much they put on earlier, to be honest with you. Uh, Cody Lukowski, though, you can see him there. There is the clear air. Meanwhile, Patrick Blazat, who's also on the soft kind of tyres, he's in a bit of an unfortunate position because he's got the soft compound. He can follow Cody Lukowski, but of course he is in that dirty air and that's going to just cost him a little bit of downforce, a little bit of time. Meanwhile, further back, there's a bit of action going on. Matt Simmons versus Valerio Gallo on the medium tyres and Valerio is fancying a bit of a sneaky look here, but he's, again, not quite as brave as Danny Solis and understandably so. So I was just thinking that I, I think I missed the, the pass there between 5th, 2nd, 7th. Um, so Matt did lose those positions there on the medium compounds. So he wasn't quite able to hold them behind for now. Um, this is interesting. So who has to stop? We have John from Wong, Siguara, Danny Solis and Rick Kevlin are now yet to stop. This will be interesting to see if uh, Matt Simmons' plan has worked. He started quite far down the grid, did Matt, but he's running in seventh place right now. All that means is one more place, and he goes through to the grand final. It'll be great to see an Aussie in the final, especially here, of course, at their home event here in Sydney. Here's Danny Solis looking up the inside of Sugawara. 
Yes, he does. He does get Sugawara there. Is then forced wide. And no. Oh, a little bit of contact on Exa. I think Sugawara saw him coming. Tried to break a little bit later to avoid it. And now Sugawara has the American driver all the, all up his rear wing at the moment as we come up now towards Surtic. You can't really go around the outside. There might be an attempt at a cutback here from Danny. So let's now watch the drive here of the Aston Martin. Danny had a much better exit. And now he has the draft and he has the momentum. He's going to have to look around the outside. It's going to be a very brave move from Danny if he can get it working. Side by side then into Hawthorne. Danny looking around the outside. He sweeps around the outside of a Japanese driver. And Danny Solis is on an absolute charge right now, making the most of that soft tyre. I have never seen that move made before. Well, the incident is under investigation uh, a little bit before, and it's just a warning given to Danny Solis, thankfully. But what a move from the American driver. That was spectacular. And the crowd here in Sydney absolutely love that one as well. Understandably so, because, as you said, Jimmy, I've not seen anything like that before. And this is brilliant. Now, how quickly is he going to be able to bridge that gap to Jonathan Wong? Seven seconds it sits at, but if you look at the difference in lap times between them, it was about three or four tenths of a second a lap faster than Jonathan Wong. So Wong's pace on the medium tyres at the moment isn't too bad, but now Solis has got a bit of clean air in front of him. This is going to be a true test of what he's made of. I think so. Now, I do think that Danny has wasted a bit of time being stuck behind other guys, which is fine, of course. He wants to get him in a good position for the end of the race. I mean, the, the long and short of it is as long as you're in the top six, it doesn't really matter. But Cody... He has gained so far three seconds on Rick Kevlin since he passed. So Cody Nikolkovsky is absolutely flying right now in the midfield. And more importantly, he has made all his stops. So I think when all is said and done and everybody else pits in, there's a good chance he'll probably be in the top three, top two, maybe even challenging Jonathan Wong at the end. And there he is now deep in concentration. Uh, very disappointing day yesterday for Cody and manufacturers. Uh, Mercedes-Benz is not really what we're used to seeing from them. They're a long way down the field, but uh, Cody, I think, wanting to right that wrong a little bit today. I think Cody's in a really good position here, actually. I think he's looking very strong. And as you said, difficult day at the office room yesterday, Jimmy, but I wonder if this is going to be the turning point for him. Maybe we'll see him challenging for the top step here tonight. Let's see how things will go. Valerio Gallo, meanwhile, all up the gearbox of Matt Simmons, trying to find his way past. Coming up the hill we go, hard on the brakes, and you can just see the commitment as they just throw the car through the corner it is wonderful to see these drivers on the limit and Valerio Gallo doing a really good job of just keeping that on the straight and narrow as he gets a face full of dust from Simmons face for the camera as well <laughs> there on the right hand side but uh, it's done a good job staying there but it comes again to Brands Hatch being difficult to overtake on I say that it's been some great overtakes we've seen in this <laughs> race of course but when it's all said and done and you're on the same compound of tyre, it can be a bit tricky. 240 k's there before breaking down the T1. And we'll try and hug the inside, let the car just drift off to the left here. Not too Ooh. much. Oh, well saved there by uh, Valerio Gallo. That was, I would have lost that one, I can tell you that one. Yeah, he was really late on the brakes there as well. Of course, dirty tyres, and you can see him scrabbling for grip as he sent it into Druid's Bend. Just about kept it on the straight and narrow. Somebody who's had a quiet race, though, is Cy Bishop. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, we've hardly seen anything from him. He's got Benjamin Barder trying to find his way through. Of course, Bishop on the soft tyres. Barder also on the soft tyres here as well. And, uh, well, Bishop hasn't really featured too much in this race so far, but maybe this will be the turning point for him. The two drivers in front, of course, are on the medium tyres, so he should be a little bit quicker than them. And if they start squabbling, it could be an opportunity for him to try and find his way past and potentially you never know how things might work out with strategy and just in motor racing in general really it's so unpredictable that uh, it could be an opportunity for him to try and find his way through into that crucial top six Cody now the gap five seconds to Rick Kevlin that was ten seconds when he had made his pit stop so you can see the gap is coming down every lap at this point they even starting to put away from Patrick Blajan behind on the same strategy so quicker than Blajan at this point as well now last pit stops Rick Kevlin coming in for that hard compound of tyres given up on the medium can't make it last any longer that might be his race done if he can't get that hard tyre working and look at that because of the soft runs at the end he's dropped all the way down the order no he hasn't our timing screen has come thank you timing screen I was I appreciate that but he does come out just ahead of Matt Simmons who of course now is on the better compound attire which could mean Matt Simmons goes up into sixth place if we end the race now he will go through to the grand final but just like that he's back down to seventh so there's a fight there going on behind come on Caramel I don't want to see the on board I want to see what's going on behind us we're still on board with Cody but I want to see what's happening with Rick and Matt Simmons come on lads 
it's getting pretty uh, close between those drivers. There is Patrick Blagen in P5, but in the back, oh, look at this. This he's is through. an train of cars, and Simmons is up the inside. He's through into sixth place, and four cars squabbling for position now, but it's the Aussie to the delight of the crowd here in Sydney, who is through into P6, but Kevlin's not going to take it lying down. Barda looking aggressive as well, and keep an eye out for Valerio Gallo in the middle of the mix as they come down into the right-hander. Bishop trying to find his way through on Gallo on the inside. Is he going to find his way past? There's contact, I think, there. Oh. Goes off the track. Oh, he's just about kept it on the straight and narrow, but Bishop goes through, as does Benjamin Barda. So Gallo goes from potentially challenging for sixth place down into tenth in the space of a few corners. Now, Sai right now has got his elbows out. He knows that he's fighting for survival. Sugawara comes into the pits now. He's on the hard compound attire. Cody goes up into third. Let's see what happens now as he come on to the last few laps. It's all coming alive here at Brands Hatch with the Aston Martin DB online coming soon to GT Sports. So you can try us at home and get involved and maybe you'll be here next time we're commentating. Matt Simmons there, currently in sixth position. That is in the hot seat. Rick Kevlum on the hard compound attire, struggling to get him up, attempting the background. Cy Bishop and Benjamin Bowder now. Benjamin Bowder having to defend from Cy. And yes, he goes back down into ninth position. Now, here's a replay of what happened here. This was Matt Simmons and Rick Kevlum when we were trying to watch it earlier on. Matt just pulls alongside, coming into 30s, hangs out Rick Kevlum to dry, takes a place, and Yossi goes, of course, up into sixth position. Very, very impressive from Matthew Simmons, former GC Academy winner, of course, in Australia. And it's great to see him performing so well out there on circuit, trying to find his way back past of Rick Kevlum. Down the drop they go in towards the right hander. Here is Cody Nikolikovsky, who's still got Patrick Blajan for company. Instant under investigation between Manny Rodriguez and Valerio Gallo. Those drivers in 10th and 11th position for contact. Clearly, that would be, I guess, at the benefit of Manny Rodriguez, who must have made the contact. Now, Jonathan Wong, the race leader, into the pits for his last stop. Now, here we go now. Keep an eye on where Jonathan Wong comes out of the pit lane. Daniel Solis will follow him in two for his pit stop. There it is. He'll go onto the hard compound and tyre. They're going to try and make them just last one lap. Now, Wong comes out of the pit lane. Where's Cody? Where's Cody? There's Cody in the background there. So, Cody will come out, I think, in second position, maybe. Let's see where Daniel Solis emerges from the pit lane. He comes out in fourth. So, right now, he will qualify. But there you go in the background. And that's the difference now between the leader and second place. Cody is having to defend from Patrick Blajan, but Jonathan Wong still retaining his lead. 3.8 seconds. Cody's good, but I don't think he's that good. Four seconds over one lap is going to be pretty much impossible for the Aussie to try and reel back in again. But still, what a drive from Cody there, keeping it up in second place. Meanwhile, back down the field, we still have squabbles going on. Patrick Blajan very close to the back of Cody as well. Daniel Solis ahead of Sugawara. And Matt Simmons, more importantly, still in sixth position. But Benjamin Barda on the soft compound attire is right behind him. Give us six. There it is. Barda on the soft compound attire has the advantage right now for Matt Simmons. Matt's going to have to have a, an absolutely awesome defensive drive to keep this place to the last part of a lap. Down in towards the drop we go through into the right-hander and Simmons soaking up the pressure of Benjamin Barda. A reminder that the top six drivers will make it through. The driver who wins this race will qualify on pole position for the grand final as well. It will be Jonathan Wong. If Cody Lukowski finishes in, in second, he'll start at the head of the second row. But Matt Simmons fighting for his place in the grand final here. Through in towards the left-hander we go, getting very close as they go in towards the sheen curve. And Matt Simmons has done a brilliant job. But here comes Jonathan Wong over the timing line and he he takes the chequered flag and the win in semi-final B. Cody Lukowski comes home in second place to the delight of the crowd here in Sydney. Blajan finishes in third, Solis in fourth, Tugawara in sixth, and Matt Simmons has got the crowd on their feet, and he qualifies for the grand final here in Sydney, holding off the charge of Benjamin Barda. And that was what we love about Gran Turismo and the FIA GT Championships World Tour event. Magic, absolutely magic. I tell you what, there was so much going on that we almost forgot the join from Wong's in the race. He managed just to get away nice and easy there. That's what we like to see. A little bit of camaraderie there. And Matt Simmons there. Two Australian drivers are going to be in the grand final. What a turnout for those, of course. But uh, the, uh, the real man of the hour is Jonathan Wong. I mean, that was an absolutely dominant performance from the Hong Kong driver. That was just fantastic.
So you can see, coming up next, we've got a feature on how to set up your rig. Anyone can do it. Well, if I can do it, you guys can. I'll tell you that. Well, let's find out, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was just amazing. I've just about got all my breath back from that one. It, it was so fun, and I love having a live audience here in Sydney as well, because it just made things so exciting. We saw Matt soaking up that pressure, and, and uh, Barda just trying to find his way through, trying to keep that pressure at a constant, but he wasn't quite able to. And uh, that was the difference between him making the final and not. I think Matt just showing his experience there. Matt, of course, has been involved in numerous real-life racing activities uh, in, the, in Group 3 cars, quite similar to this, uh, this GT1 Aston. And that experience, I think, just won out. He just kept his line. He knew that if he just stayed in this line and kept things easy, that'll be it. He did it exceptionally well. Yeah, exceptional, really. And uh, what do you think about Cody Likolikovsky's stress? He was on the soft tyres. If there'd been another couple of laps in it, he probably would have had a sneaky chance at uh, fighting for that race lead. Possibly, but the important thing is there wasn't. And uh, I think, John, uh, yeah, I think, I think, I think Johnny played. If buts and maybe. Yeah, played it just to perfection. He really did. So, of course, here's a couple of highlights from the semi-final B. If you just joined us, it was Jonathan Wong who led us off at the start of his 17th lap race here at Brands Hatch. But of course, we had action pretty much straight away coming down to Druids. Lots of people just fighting for position. Here was Cody and Sugawara. Sugawara just sending up the inside in that soft compound of tyre and trying to get by uh, the Australian as quick as he could to put, uh, put the chase up to Jonathan Wong, who had an early lead. Here was Rick Kevlum and Lukowski as well. This is a, a great move by Kevlum, just using all the track on the exit of Druids up the inside, and Cody, of course, down to fourth. But I think Cody didn't really fight that too hard just because of where he was on track and with the strategy. Yeah, sensible driving there from Cody Lukowski. He really has matured a lot over the last year or so, and that is evident with his performance out there on track. Great stuff from uh, Jonathan Wong. You can see Sugawara sending it full sideways into the Sheen curve, not by... Uh, uh, not by purpose, not on purpose, I should say, rather. Here, though, was an absolutely blinding move from Danny Solis, sending it through on the inside into Hawthorne Bend, finding his way past. And you can see they're not looking at at all, but two. this was the one of the moment, wasn't it? Yeah, just right round the outside there. It's amazing to watch. He's had such confidence in that compound attire. This looks normal for him. He's like, yeah, right. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> I, know, I know what I'm about. Here was the move, I think, that basically secured Matt Simmons the, uh, the last spot he got past Rick Kevin as quick as he could and of course then sandwiched them between um, him and Bader. But Jonathan Wong was the guy to come home with the win there. I think he's just a sigh of relief. He knows he still has more to do and there goes straight away. Nick, uh, uh, sorry, Cody gets up, gives a little bit of a handshake there to Jonathan Wong just goes to show these guys a lot of respect out there. Yeah, let's see confirmation, shall we, of the final results from semi-final B here in Sydney as well. You can see Jonathan Wong is the victor of that race. Cody Nikolodikovsky coming home in second. Patrick Blagen claiming a top three finish in third position. Solis, Sugawara and Simmons all make the cut into the grand final. But sadly, we say uh, goodbye to Benjamin Barda as well as Cy Bishop and the rest of the drivers. And there is the starting grid for the grand final. Jonathan Wong, Beauvoir on the front row. Lukowski and Miazono on the second row. Blagen and Darush, Solis and Maritlino, Sugawara and Lopez, Simmons and Sassuolo rounding out the order. That is a very tantalizing lineup, if I do say so hard to call that one. I'm glad it isn't our job. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Goodness me. Uh, let's head over to Julia, shall we, who I think is with some of our competitors. Ah, oh, yes, I'm down here with uh, the winner, Jonathan Bob. Um, you completely, you, you smashed that. I mean, in that you had a really good, you know, a good lead at the, at the end of it as well. Um, why do you think that was? Why are you so far ahead of the rest? I think the main reason is because Cody behind me is using the medium to start, and he held up a car behind using the soft tie, and I just using the soft tie, the advantage to just create a gap, and that's, I think, that's the main reason. And what was it like driving the car? Was it a good, enjoyable drive? Uh, the car is very good to drive. A little bit too fast on the straight line, you need to <laughs> brake a little bit early, so every time you know, the brake form, we need to be very careful, especially the last, last in, the last lap, uh, using the hard tie is very tough. So you're going to move forward uh, into the final. Who do you think is your biggest competition? Who've got your eye on? Uh, basically everybody, <laughs> because my my qualifying lap is actually one of my best laps. So I don't know if I can do it again. And everyone may be faster than me right here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you remember which was the first world tour you qualified for? Uh, I think it's the 2018 in Salzburg. Yeah. Yeah, the Hunger Seven one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, look, I think, you know, it's fantastic. To give them a big round of applause, you did an amazing, amazing, amazing job. Uh, now, if you guys at home think you could do better, here's how you can qualify through the online series. Make sure you enter sport mode in GT Sport. 
then head over. Out of each stage, we'll have 10 races you can take part of, uh, each with points moving forward. And obviously, uh, the person with the largest points in each region will be able to come and uh, come and join us at World Tour, which is pretty fantastic. I mean, come on, guys, get involved. Just don't leave it all up to these. <laughs> So I think there's there's a lot of conversation sometimes about like, oh, you know, maybe you need like a really fancy rig or something, you know, spend a lot of money to actually be able to qualify to make it to the World Tour. But uh, I think you'll be kind of surprised. We've got a little feature to show you just about that. When you finally make it to the World Tour Championships, you get to sit on the stage and race in some pretty serious bits of kit. But to make your way here, you actually don't need a lot to get started. When you first started racing for GT, were you just using like a PS4 and a controller? Yeah, of course. Yeah, literally. So I started with GT Academy, and that was a PlayStation, a controller, and just practicing. And I was very young as well, so the controller was too big for my hands. So yeah, controller was the first stuff I used, and then I bought a cheap entry-level wheel. And yeah, that was doing the job correctly, so... And it was still enough to get qualified for the finals. Now, what's your setup like at home now? Still using the wooden rig, still got a car seat taken out from some Audi. No, not really a rig. Um, I've got a, a bookshelf, um, just a wooden bookshelf, which moves when I'm actually driving. What's your setup like at home now? So now I use the Thrustmaster TGT, this is the Gran Turismo Sport official wheel. I don't think it uh, has an influence on my lap times, just comfort. This is pretty useful uh, in case of uh, frustration in your race. I mean, do you have to spend a lot of money to get good at Gran Turismo? Definitely not, I don't think so. It's just maybe more efficient practice-wise. It's really, really the person behind the wheel. The speed is what you've got inside you, not what the wheel provides to you. It's a great equipment here and I'm very grateful to, to, to have all this in, in the event. Just goes to show that you don't always have to have the best setup in the world. You can see Marcus Kraberger, the winner of our Tag Heuer VIP competition. He has flown all the way from Austria to here in Sydney, courtesy of Tag Heuer. Prices don't get much better than that, do they? Not really, no. I mean, I, I don't envy the jet lag, of course. I keep moaning about that, don't I? But, um, yeah, on the subject of rigs, of course, I mean, I've got a, a nice pricey rig at home. It doesn't make me any faster. <laughs> so if you can be out there and you can uh, get involved, be it on a game pad or even a cheap entry level wheel, you've got a chance of being here in a, in a couple of months' time. So what's bad about that? I think the most important thing we need to talk about over the last 30 seconds, Jimmy, is the fact that the makeup guy just came out and just ended up putting, like, bronzer or something on your arms. I've never seen makeup applied in such a speedy fashion. They weren't ready for how pale I am. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Monitor town at its best. Goodness me. Right, let's get into the action, shall we, and get back to it because we're about ready for the uh, Nations Cup grand final here tonight. And uh, it's a bit of a special one for you. Red Bull X 2019 cars, of course, as is customary mm -hmm. in the Nations Cup. But it's at the Dragon Trail Seaside Circuit, and it is a track that is known for being very challenging at the best of times. Yeah, great circuit, especially in these uh, Red Bull X 2019 cars. Lots of downforce here, of course. So, Sipstream and dueling is going to be very, very important around here. As always, racing hard, medium and soft compounder tyres uh, on display again. Uh, five times tyre wear as well, with all tyres having to be used at least once. So similar to before. Now, our strategists, I think this is probably wrong, <laughs> they're, they're, they're going to think 10 laps on each compounder tyre. I reckon we'll see the, the soft compounder tyres uh, basically extended as long as possible. There's no limit of how long or how short you can use the tyre, so basically stay on that fast tyre as long as you can. Fueling is going to be the main thing here, though. Yeah, of course, as you can see, 15 laps will get you a full tank. It's 30 laps, though, this race. So you're going to have to put a full tank of fuel in 100 litres or so at least once over the course of this one. So uh, I'll be excited to see how it all plays out and when drivers will opt to do that. Will they do it in their first pit stop? Will they do it in their second pit stop and try and do a bit of a splash and dash or something like that? It's going to be exciting to see how it all plays out. I think so. This is where having maybe a uh, kind of partner on circuit is really going to help. So it's all about positioning here. Mm, exactly. So... Who is your hot pick for this race, Jimmy? Hot pick? Uh, it's going to have to be, I think, Wong. I think he's going to be on the end there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's get there ready then, shall we? The grand final for the Nations Cup is about to go green.
the 2020 FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships grand final for the Nations Cup is about to get underway here in Sydney, Australia. And here's how the grid lines up. So Jonathan Wong then, of course, will win it in the last race, takes the pole position. Can he convert that to a win here in Sydney? Baptiste Beauvoir, who was so strong in semi-final A, starts in second place. Behind him, the first of two Australians, Cody Nikolakovsky, a big cheer from the audience there to Kimi Miyazono, the incredibly fast Japanese driver, starting in fourth. Then in fifth, we have Patrick Lajan. Good result for him, watch out for him. Very quick in that X2019. Then in sixth, the second French driver, Ren Derich there and the blue liveried X2010. Then Danny Solis, who'd had such a great race in uh, semi-final B in seventh place, then going down the grid. Maraglino, of course, our Italian commentator is on their feet as we see him go by. And it's Sugawara in ninth position, starting off in ninth there. And then down in tenth, Coca Lopez. He's always in the final, it seems. Can he finally get onto the podium? Then in eleventh place is Matt Simmons, mini-match, or mid-match, you know him online there. Great to see him in the final. Adam Willow just about sneaking into the final there in 12th in that British Racing Green X 2019. Giving us something to shout about for the British commentators at last. Yeah. Thankfully. Finally. Cheers, Adam. Appreciate that, mate. Uh, first look at the tyre strategies. You can see everybody either starting on the medium or the hard tyres. Only Takuma Miyazono and Koke Lopez on the harder compound of tyre. Everybody else opting for the mediums. So let's see how it's all going to play out for these drivers. Our hot pick for this race, Cody Nikola Lakovsky, starting from P3, the head of the second row of the grid, did an absolutely brilliant job in that semi-final B race we just had to finish in second position. He starts from the head of the second row of the grid. How is it all going to play out at the end of this 30-lap race? Now, we'll see that Miyazono is a bit, of a, uh, a bit of a diva when it comes to strategies. Watch out for him. He's starting P4 in the hard compound attire. But long race here at Dragon Trail, 30 laps. All about consistency, all about concentration, all about speed as we come then to the start finish line to start off our first grand final of the year. World Tour 2020 Sydney, the GT World Championships are about to go green. And here we are then, lights out, and Jonathan Wong will lead us away. And immediately, Bouvoir pulls into the slipstream, as does Cody Lukoski in the background of two Japanese, the Japanese driver and Patrick Plajan are very close already. Cody looking up the inside, he's going to try both of them. No, he doesn't, just about keeps it there on the inside of Beauvoir. A little bit of side-to-side -side contact with Cody going out wide. He'll be on the outside here for the right-hander. Baptiste will have the line, but Cody goes up into second place. So an overtake there for Cody. He wants to get up after Jonathan Wong as quick as he can. We know Cody is quick in the X-2019. He wants to get his clear track and get into the draft as soon as possible. Danny Solis losing a place down into seventh place. But other than that, it seems business as usual. Matt Simmons, though, fighting there in eighth and ninth place and Sugawara losing places all the time. Adam Tosuilo already, I'll say already up into a place there, but I think our timing score is having a little bit of a uh, mad five minutes. Yeah, exactly. I think you're spot on there, Jimmy. I think Beauvoir's had a bit of a moment because he's down in 11th according to those timing screens. Let's see what happens. Yeah, he's dropped down to 12th position, so Baptiste Beauvoir, it has gone very much southwards. I think it's been a spin look from the map. middle. Yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely spot on. Yeah, there was contact between himself and Randerou, so the two Frenchmen clearly coming together. That will not please our French commentators back at base in London at the moment. Let's see if we can get a replay of what happened, but it's been a shocker of a first lap, a shocker of a start for the grand final for Baptiste Beauvoir and all of his hard work, all of his great performances that he put in to take that win in semi-final A come undone. And you can see Takuma Miyazono wants to go ugly early, get those hard tyres off as soon as he possibly can, get onto the mediums for a long stint in this race. Now, this might not work now because I don't think Takuma Miyazono accounted for the fact that Sosuilo and Beauvoir are now going to be probably where he is when he comes out on the circuit. He wanted a cleared track to try and make the most of the medium compound of tyres. It seems everyone's going for the soft at the end. So here's a replay. Matt Simmons goes wide. Oh, Oh, Matt. Oh, Matt. And then back on. Adam just pinballs back on the circuit. That all happened because Matt Simmons got it all wrong there. So I would not be surprised if we see a penalty. Of course, it wasn't intentional, but doesn't matter. You're in control of the car. And that's ruined Adam's race. Meanwhile, Danny Solis moved up into third place there uh, in the medium compound attire. Every car currently on the same compound. It's so just a matter of trying to keep things nice and consistent right now. Looking back there. Uh, now, we've been told by our uh, trusty race director, Toyo, that we're probably going to be seeing a, a fuel-saving race, a slipstream race. As you said at the start of the uh, the race, Tom, 15 laps you'll get out of a tank here. Race is 30. If you're being too aggressive, you might you might actually end up not making it to the line on one stop. So there'll be a bit of lifting and coasting. And right now, Danny Solis is acting as a, a sort of a uh, punching through the air a bit. Saying that, he's let Ryan Zarusha, I think maybe a little bit slow out of the chicane of death, TM. And uh, maybe he's going to let Ryan punch the hole for a while. 
Yeah, maybe that is the strategy he's going for. You can see Marathalino uh, also battling with Tatsuya Sugawara, who's had a shocker of an opening stage at this race, as has Takuma Miyazono down in ninth position, so it's not going the way of the Japanese drivers at all in this race, down in seventh and ninth position, respectively. Incident involving Blajan and Sugawara. Clearly, those two have made contact at some point over the course of this one. Uh, no further action following that incident. Well, Miyazono put it on. Of oh, course, he did. So, Sorry, right so he's, um, he's he's probably. We we'll see what we'll, we have to see what sort of mad strategy he's thought up this time. Of course, cast your mind back to New York last year, and he nearly won the entire race. Apart from this man, actually, uh, I think uh, murdered him would be the, <laughs> the the right thing to say. Really, uh, there was a big incident back there, but we'll forget that. That's in the past now. I'm sure Cody has too, and he's now trying to track down Jonathan Wong. You can see just how much quicker Cody is using that draft now, coming down to one of the, be the best overtaking slots in the course. It's downhill. So you have to break a little bit earlier than you usually would. Try it to the inside, use the downforce of this car, although saying that at this speed, there's not much downforce going over, not much air going over the car, so the car becomes very look, look at this onboard through here, you came to death, look at that right foot, completely flat through the entire thing, <laughs> almost touched the wall on the left there, that's how you do it, this is why these guys are the pros. Sensation of speed through there is unbelievable, isn't it? You can see him really closing down now, Cody Nikola Lewandowski, onto the back of uh, Jonathan Wong through that right hand, and that's the corner that I always really struggle with at this track because it's such a late apex going through there. It's almost like a reverse version of Surtees at Brands Hatch, really, and uh, it launches you onto this start finish straight. You keep it pinned through this right hander, then you have to go hard onto the anchors, slow it down, and it all settles for the beginning of this lap. And you can see Cody doing a really good job of that, and these two breaking a bit of a gap out to Randa Rouge. Now, here's what happened between Beauvoir, and this was, I think, in the opening stage of this race on the opening lap between himself and Randa Rouge. So I think we're going to see Rand coming in with a bit of a punt here. This was the overtake for the uh, for second place. I think Cody there just had a better run on the exit. You see there, just a tiny bit better through there, and as a result, was able to just pull up ahead and get through. But we're not, we're still not sure what happened to Beauvoir. We're still watching the replay now. The background badge angle is a little bit wide, but it's not not much revealed there from that replay, unfortunately. But De Derish is still there. He's still in third place, so there is still hope, of course, uh, for the Frenchman here. Uh, I'm at home supporting the uh, the French stream. Of course, if you are a Frenchman and wondering, I can't understand anything with guys, we are actually uh, broadcasting seven different languages. So uh, you can find those all on the Grand Trismo TV YouTube channel. Maybe hang a subscribe while you're there as well. And click the get the notifications on as well. It's all of our exclusive GT content coming your way over the next few weeks and months. Now, Danny Solis not doing a bad job sitting there in P4 at the moment. He's uh, keeping close to Randaru, so get the pressure from behind of Patrick Blagen. And a note also to Patrick Blagen. This is a really strong performance from him. Of course, he took that podium in superb style in the grand final. Himself and Baptiste Beauvoir were squabbling for position in these Red Bull X 2019 cars. He's a driver who clearly, Blagen, loves these high downforce cars. And that's one of the interesting things about these here, Jimmy, because you can meet some drivers, they like the high downforce cars, other drivers don't. Yeah, I love the Highland Force cars. They, they mask my lack of skill, so that's why I like them. But we're on board now with Patrick Blajan. And you're seeing right now, you might have saw on the, the straight that Derich actually tried to break the toe coming down the T1. He knows that right now, again, he's punching the hole, but really, it's very tricky to do that round here because these, these cars, are the, uh, as advanced as they are in terms of aero, they punch a big old hole. Uh, in the air when you're going through it, which means anyone behind you is effectively not having to face the friction you have, and they get a bit of a speed boost going down the straight, as you're seeing now, illustrated by Patrick Bajan. 306, 310, 315 Ks in, 21 an hour, snaps out of a slipstream. That was about as aggressive as you can get there, and that was perfectly timed. That was clinical from Patrick Blash, and that's exactly how you do it. That reaction time, that was amazing. <laughs> Phenomenal, I love seeing that from Patrick Blazin. The thing is, he didn't show any emotion either. He always looks so calm and cool with everything that he does. I saw him smiling the other day and I wondered, um, yeah, are you okay? <laughs> uh, exactly. I was like, are you all right there, Patrick? And he's fine. Look at this, though. Look at this. Just a snap out. Oh, so aggressive. Late on the brakes, on the ragged edge of retardation on the brakes, through into fourth place. Brilliant. You love to see it. You love to see it. And now, already, right into the chase and of Ryan Derich in front. And uh, Patrick, I think he's uh, got the bit between his teeth right now. But the thing is, this we've got to think. Do you want to get past uh, the Frenchman in front? And do you want to be the, the pace centre? Do you want to stay where you are? Lift a little bit, coast a little bit, make sure that you're not going over that fuel that might be an issue later on in the race. Well, you talked about them punching a hole in the air on the straights, and sure, that is true, but the converse, obviously, is also true when you're in a corner, you're in that dirty air, that turbulent air, it's causing the front to wash white. So as you come down into these S-bends, it's not the position you want to be in either. So it's, it's 
oranges and apples, isn't it, really? You say that, though, he still manages to gain on the rain through there, so maybe not a good run there from the Frenchman. And now, again, the draft coming into play. Look at the speed just to gain you. Nearly 200 mile an hour before breaking here. Big coast, big coast there from Patrick Blanchard. You see, just got off the throttle, let the car just go to the bottom of the hill, then got on the brakes. He's saving fuel. Short so, shifting as well. Yeah, short shifting as well. Good spot there, Tom. So, really, I think he's playing the long game. Through that chicane then. Does he have a little lift into there? No, no chance. Fully committed. Of course he is. It's Blajan. Look at De Rouge though, going defensive. He knows that Blajan is behind. He's trying to upset him here, but ultimately that just cost De Rouge time there. It's costing him concentration. He's gone a little bit wide going into that uh, final corner. Gathers it all up though, but he's clearly under a bit of pressure. And Ryan, that was just a little bit unnecessary, I feel, from his point of view there. I think maybe he's not aware that Patrick is saving fuel. Because imagine you're, in, you're into his position, right? You look in your mirror, one, one minute Solis is there, next minute Bajan's there. He's coming through the full thing. Oh no, he's not in this place too. Thing is, I think that Rayan is probably actually in the weakest position despite being third on track right now because he's not getting any opportunity to save fuel. No draft, not getting any opportunity to six stream either. Whereas all these guys behind are having that. Now, also, front of the field, we've not really checked in with them for a while. Jonathan Wong and Cody Nicholas Bukowski, they're still only half a second apart, but I think we have the same story here, same thing going on, where uh, Cody is just lifting and coasting. And then what we'll see is when they do come into a pit stop, and when fuel is eventually added to the car, he'll be in for a short stop. We might even jump in from the pit stop at this point, but now but we're getting ahead of ourselves a bit. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, what happens there. Great view here back from Jonathan Wong's X2019. There's a, watch this, through the chain of death here. Both of them absolutely committed to get a real sense of speed. Look at that wall flash by on the left and right. One small mistake through there. Big repair bill. Here comes Cody. Yep, really close now is Cody Nikolikovsky. It's just in a lift off though, just keeping it careful. There's no point in trying to find the way past, doing anything rash at this stage. What he needs to do is force Jonathan Wong into a mistake if he's going to try and find his way through. But at the moment, these two are doing a good job of just working together, just keeping that gap at a constant to Patrick Blajan there. 5.2 seconds it sits at. I'm going to keep an eye on the times, actually, over the next couple of laps or so between these guys and see how much faster Patrick Blajan is, because everybody at this moment in this race is on exactly the same strategy, all or, or not the same strategy, but all on the same tyres. They're all on the medium tyres, so it is down to driver skill and, of course, track position as to what sort of times you're going to be setting yes definitely it's all about uh, where your car is placed and how you're doing so we're getting some great onboard telemetry now from cody there he is on the left just having a little chat with himself probably just keying himself up a little bit just telling himself right okay concentrate make sure you're in the right part of the circuit just reminding himself of his pit strategy as well and let's watch again that uh, that green bar on the right hand side of the wheel let's see if he lifts coming down the hill here let's have a look no, he doesn't. So he's actually right now just doing his best to stay with John for more. Maybe he's short shifting a little bit, doing a little bit out there for the, for the sake of grip. There's a little, yeah, a little short shift there coming into the chicane. So I think he, I think he's doing it in different places. Lifting and coasting is probably the most efficient way to save fuel, but you can do it by short shifting too. So everyone playing the long game here. Long there as well. Just went a little bit wide coming out of that corner. Now here's a replay of something that went on. I wonder if this is uh, this is Randy Roos clearly being attacked by Danny Solis side by side and Solis going. Way too late on the brakes, that's going to cost him the position to Salvatore Maraclino there as well. And contact to boot. Oh, Sugawara getting involved there as well. So contact between Maraclino and Solis as Maraclino got all out of shape so coming through that corner. What happened there? Because Blasian was behind Derouche. Something's happened, of course, with Derouche before then. So he's made a couple of mistakes. He's pitted in now, I think, to get rid of his tyres. Maybe they were shot. And Miyazono has gone on to the soft compound of tyre. But where's he so going to emerge out? That's the thing. He's going to do it. He's going to do it again. He's going to go for the spa strategy. I'm telling you right now, on a soft compound tyre, he's going to fill it up, I think, uh, or put as much fuel in as possible, and then just go hard until the end. He's going to have to make one more stop than anybody else, but he's going to be an absolute missile coming through the field. So we've got to keep an eye on him now. He tried something similar at Spa last year at New York. It nearly worked. It might work here. It's possible. Let's see how he goes then, Miyazono. He can now afford, as you said, Jimmy, to go flat out to the finish, unlike anybody else. If he does indeed go for that strategy, because, well, doing the race on this set of soft tyres, that's 21 laps. That's nearly impossible. It is probably impossible. He'll need, he'll need a fuel stop as well. Yeah. He, he's not going to be able to make it in the field, so there'll be one more stop guaranteed for Miyazono. He is the one to watch. If you're at home in the audience right now, keep an eye on that gap. So just a reminder, 15 laps is how much will they start with. 
of course, they have to put 15 more laps to get to the end. Here's Matt Simmons, or Aussie driver, up into sixth. Well, he must have taken some fuel on board there, Miyazona, because it becomes the end of that fuel life if it's only 15 laps that you can get in the car. We're on lap nine already. He, he, he did put some in, yeah, yeah. So I think he's going to try and just two stop it instead of the one stop. So uh, we'll see, of course. Like, he's always one to make us question how the hell strategy works in this game, and he goes out and just makes it uh, look easy. So, meanwhile, these guys are all drafting each other still. At the moment, Patrick Bashan has actually broken away from the pack, so I think he's now just trying to speed up a little bit. And Darius is coming again straight away. It's gone to the soft compound tyre. He's doing the same thing. They're all going to try the two stop. Well, the three stop, I should say. Sorry. Interesting strategy call for these guys there. Then, so Matthew Simmons, we can see him now. We're riding on board with the Australian driver. Had a bit of a torrid start to that race. One of the off-track excursion, taking out Adam Sasuilo here then as well. So I'm here sure. is Matt Simmons. Oh, well, who's that? That was slow. That was Danny Solis slow there through the uh, chicane. And Matt Simmons takes advantage. So does Sugawara. So it's a mistake there from the American driver. And so Swillo coming back through the field. Now, he's not pitted yet either, so he's trying to get involved in the action. Goes up the inside to Sugawara and tries to anyway. There, side by side. Simmons sideways out of the right hand. That's going to slow him down coming into the chicane. So Swillo has to duck back in behind Sugawara. You cannot go two by two through here. You will have a crash. Quite a big one at that as well. And now Solis has gone from fourth down to eighth place, so a big mistake there from the American. What happens? Here we are. Sorry, he was in fifth position. He comes down the hill here, comes through the chicane. Oh, Ooh. just just catches the, the, the curb. Oh, well saved there, Danny. Just about kept that face in the right way. But the result, of course, loss of speed and loss of position. Well then, that just goes to show how quickly things can change. One small mistake can cost you a loss, and it cost him quite dearly there, Danny Solis. Running on board now, Matt Simmons. Here comes Adam Swillow diving, lunging down the inside. What a move there from Adam Swillow. That was absolutely phenomenal from the British driver. Up now into P5 on lap 11 in the grand final for the Nations Cup. Now he's got a bit of clear track in front of him on that medium compound of tyre. He hasn't pitted. Of course, as has nobody else in front or behind him on the road currently at the moment, as you can see. So let's see how things are going to play out. Bear in mind, this was a man that was last uh, not too long ago. He has been absolutely charging since then. This is a man with a bit between his teeth at the moment. He was right the now, fastest man on the track up until Takumi Miyazono just got into the 119. So just, yeah, exactly. So we're looking at the last lap times right now. Oh, hang on, there's Matt Simmons. There you go. You can just see him going off the track there. And that was just a replay, as we just saw. So everyone at the moment, bar to Kimi Zona, the missile who named him for this race, is uh, doing 21s. 21.6 is the best lap time apart from that. Miyazano's on a 19.7, so he is nearly two seconds a lap faster than anyone else on the circuit right now. He is going to have to make an extra pit stop. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. It certainly is. Here is Jonathan Wong, again, still with Cody Nikolakovsky. Towing him in, he's got the magnets on, trying to find his way past, but he, uh, he's just not able to do so at the moment. I don't think Cody's doing too much of an attacking job at the moment, and uh, th and also Jonathan Wong, as you can see, not doing too much in terms of defending. Those two just working together quite nicely. They've still got that gap to Patrick Blajang at quite a consistent five seconds there and thereabouts, and over the last couple of laps or so, it's come down at just a couple of tenths or so, but nothing really worth writing home about, and all these guys, of course, have not made any pit stops in this race. They're going to have to do it quite soon because uh, they're going to be coming to the end of their fuel life, if nothing else. Yeah, don't fret, though, of course, if you're a Cody fan. I think this is very much a manufactured gap, and you see that right now he just closes two seconds there, and then just not what's sort of breaking his leg, so he's just trying to keep that uh, car alive as much as possible. Again, Miyazono now still on a charge. His last lap was nearly identical. His best lap was in the 119.7 flat. This lap was a 119.719, so 19,000 slower, but still, again, two seconds a lap faster than anybody else. I'm going to enjoy watching this one. Here we are on board. Now, watch his commitment. Look how late he breaks there. Machine gunning down through the gears on the power nicely. He smashes the front one, actually uses all the road. And now, for the fast chicane, there'll be no hint of a lift. I bet, I bet my life on it through here. Nice and easy. There you go. And you see there, just 130 BPM right now. His heart rate is actually a bit higher than mine, which is impressive, because I usually have a heart attack on these broadcasts, according to, my, <laughs> according to my Fitbit, anyway. Coming down now to the last corner, look at that perfection, the line, that is beautiful through there, using all the circuit, and so smooth as well. It's so important to be smooth in these cars. I just love watching these drivers in the zone. I mean, I had a go in one of the Group 4 cars in the pro arm race earlier, and I was shocking, to be honest I with can, you. I can, I can, I can. You can, can testify to that. You've got the crowd turned against me as well there, Jimmy, to be fair. Rightly as well, so. <laughs> understandable, really. But I just love the way these guys 
was rumoured to get in the zone. I was, I was paired with Cy Bishop, who sadly is not competing in this grand final, uh, owing to a very difficult semi-final B. But I just love the way they were able to get in the zone, get themselves composed and calm. And to come with Zono, nothing phased him. When he's on form like this, he is absolutely untouchable. And that is what we're seeing out here tonight. We have to think the next driver on the same strategy here is Coco Lopez. He's six seconds behind. And they're on the same strategy, on the same tyre, same grip, and he's pulled out six seconds on, on the Coco Lopez. And Lopez is not slow. He's a very quick driver in his own right. So, we'll return to the front of the field. John from one. We're 13 laps into this race, and now nearly coming on to the 14th lap. I wonder when we're going to see our first pit stop from the guys trying the two-stop strategy. So, it's really nice to have a bit of variance, because usually we have everyone trying the same pit stop strategy, but, of course, some people are trying to find a better way through. Patrick Blajan is a bit of a no-man's land right now. He's in third position. He does have uh, Marek Vino behind, and Cody's taken the position. So, Cody has a good, a bit impatient there, and Cody goes up into first place. Now, will we see him put away? We just, I just caught that out of the corner of my eye going down a T1. I was so sure he was going to stay in position, but maybe John from Wong's a little bit slow. I think Cody thinks, right, I'm quicker now. Let's get on with it and let's try and uh, make a gap. So, here we are then. See it already. Four tenths of a second. Now, the draft really is effective to about a second and a bit around, maybe even 1.5 seconds. So, Cody needs to bring that gap up now if he wants to make good on the system. So here's a replay, we missed this on, on the broadcast, coming through T1, comes up to the first chicane, lay it on the brakes, up he goes up the inside, nice move Cody, like that. Not bad at all there for Cody Nikolikovsky, as you said, he's going to pull the pin though, that is the crucial question for him. Half a second the gap now sits out between himself and Jonathan Wong. Does Wong though have anything left in the tank? Does he have an answer to it? Meanwhile, keeping an eye consistently on Takuma Miyazono, 119.8 last time around, he again is closing the gap down to Matt Simmons in front of him, but building that gap out now, sitting at 7.2 seconds to Koke Lopez, and he is looking very composed indeed, and as Jimmy said, in a very good position, will it be a strategy that pays off? Let's wait and see how things go. We're now at the halfway stage in this race as the drivers come down in through T1, hard on the brakes and into T2. Now, Adam Sosmillo is the first of the medium shot runners to make a pit stop. He's going onto the hard compound of tyres for the middle stages of this one, and not before time, because he only has 14 litres of fuel left in his tank. Puts a bit of fuel in, comes out of the pit lane, where does he emerge in terms of the rest of his competition, Adam Sosuilo? It's down in P8, it's in no man's land. He has got a bit of clear track, which will be something a bit welcome. Zono. Ah, but there is Takuma Miyazono, who is in 10th in ninth position, and of course on a quicker compound of tyre. So again, a testament to Miyazono's speed. He's made two stops, and look, he's within someone who's only made one stop. That is the difference around here. And now Takuma is going to have to get past him as quick as he can. He cannot afford to be stuck behind anyone in this strategy. This is a hot lap strategy. It's all about just being as fast as possible. And still, that is, that is his fifth lap time in a row in the 19s. And there's no one at all in the 20s, apart from the French guys right at the back of the field. Now, Takuma Miyazono, just to put in perspective why we're rating him so highly and waxing lyrical about him here tonight, looking through some of his stats last year, he took three wins, three Three podiums. His worst result in any of the World Tour races he partook in in 2019 was seventh position. That's the best of any Nations Cup competitor. He is a driver who we hold in very high esteem, even if the results on paper don't necessarily warrant it. But look at how close he is as Cody Lukowski, the race leader, is in the pit lane onto the medium to the hard compound of tyres in the middle stages of this race. He boxes. Where will he emerge? Out on track. Danny Solis also in from the medium to the soft compound of tyres. But Kuma Miyazono, the driver we were talking about, is going to be very close indeed to try and find his way through and I'm fairly sure if he hasn't managed it it won't be long before he does find his way past he is now into fifth position and he's also got clear track in front of him this has worked out beautifully for the Japanese driver it has yeah Miyazono now he does have to stop again keep that in mind there's going to be one more stop for Miyazono Cody also has one more stop on the hard compound of tyre I wonder if he'll just pit in the end of his lap and get rid of it I'm unsure there's a lot of fuel went in there, so it makes me wonder why you'd put that in now and maybe look to try and get burn some of it now on the hard combat of tyres. Quite, quite hard to get your head around the strategy, uh, even for us here, of course, who are we're, we're professionals. I say, I say professionals <laughs> in the loosest possible term, of course. And Adam Swillow comes back into the pit lane. He's fueling it right up now, so he's going to go... He's got 100 litres of fuel, but that means he is going to go just as fast as he can now to the end of the race. So Adam now trying something a little bit different, but again, Look at the gap between him and Miyazano, it's not a similar strategy. That's like 30 seconds. Yeah, it's not insurmountable, but it's very hard to try and do that. Here is Jonathan Wong coming into the pit lane, then the race leader pits. 
on lap 16. Medium tyres he is on, on to the soft combat of tyres. Maraclino also to the pit, Blajan as well. They go from the medium to the hard tyres respectively. Sugawara also following suit there as well. So one on to the soft combat of tyres here for his first pit stop in this race, but he has of course got to run. Uh, another compound of tyres does uh, him at the moment. So Jonathan Wong, he started on the mediums. He's now going on to the softs. He's got to end this race on the hard tyres, and surely he's going to try and do that as late as he possibly can. Yeah, big chunk of fuel going in as well, so opting to try and run heavy on the soft compound of tyre, it seems. That's an interesting strap there. Um, we'll see how that goes. I mean, ideally, you want to be running the soft the soft tyres on a light, lighter fuel so you can really make the most of them, of course, but this is where these guys have to sit down and make that choice. Uh, Matt Simmons opting to come on to the soft compound of tyre as well, but Miyazono right now is up into second place. He's in second place right now. Again, still got that stop to make, but he's up, he's basically just going as fast as he can and trying to make up that pit stop um, whilst being out on circuit. He will have a fuel stop as well, so it'll be quite a long stop for him, but uh, we'll see what he can do. Still uh, 13 laps left to run. He's the de facto race leader, of course, is Blash, and has still got to make yet another stop in this race. So uh, I'll be interested to see about these hard compound shod drivers. Will they try and get them off as soon as they possibly can, get themselves onto a faster compound before the end of uh, this race? Well, they have to change tyres, of course, but will they do it as soon as they possibly can, or will they opt to run it for a few more laps? Here we ride on board with Cody Nikolaikovsky, the Australian driver then, with Tatsuya Sugawara very close in front of him. Through into that right hand, we go. You can see Lukowski being very ginger on the brakes. He's coming in, though. He wants to get off those hard tyres as soon as he can. And I can't say I blame him. Sugawara in front, also following suit. They go on to the soft tyres, those two drivers. Here we go, then. This is going to be basically everyone blinking. And now it's going to be a sprint to the end. There'll be a bit more fuel going into that car so it can make it to the end. Probably around 80, 90 litres or so. 85 or so by my reckoning. And my maths is pretty bad, so I don't have a word for it. But Sugawara, of course, on the softs as well. This is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm really curious as to how this is going to end now. 80 litres. Cody thinks he can save a little bit when he's out there as well. So he goes back onto the circuit. Where does he emerge? He emerges out in ninth place. Now, some of these guys still have to make another stop. I think Darush does. I think that uh, um, I think that Lopez does as well. Oh, a lot, so many different strategies here. It's quite hard to keep an eye on it all. Yeah, it certainly is. So uh, we'll keep an eye out and just work it all out. Now, here is Takumi Miyazono. He's in second position. He's on the soft carpet of tyres, but we just saw the fuel light blinking, I think, on his car there. He's going to have to make a pit stop very soon. If it was, oh, it's Blajan, in fact. You're absolutely right. It's Patrick Blajan, so he's going to be pitting, no question, at the end of this lap. It's going to allow Takuma some clear track in front of him on that soft carpet of tyres. And look at the gap he's been able to build out over Salvatore Maraclino over the last lap. Four seconds that now sits at. For the Japanese driver, Blajan goes into the pit lane. Bit of a slide from Takuma Miyazono. Nothing really to worry too much about. And now Miyazono has got that clear track in front of him to try and pummel those laps in, pummel those times in, and then give himself enough of a buffer when he makes his final pit stop in this race. 11 laps remain here in the grand final of the Nations Cup for World Tour 1 of the 2020 FIA Gran Turismo Championships. It's anybody's game at the moment, but it is looking very strong indeed for Takuma Miyazono as things stand. Remember of course at home to uh, give us your idea and your vote for the driver of the day mission driver of the day hashtag michelin fia gtc let us know you think has performed well you might even get a nice hat later on if we, if we treat them well <laughs> so um but now yes Niazano has been released he now has to just go as quick as he can Basically, every lap is going to be a qualifying lap. Think back to Schumacher, Hungary. Is it back in 98? 98. 98. 98, 98, It's yeah. that sort of performance for me as I know. Pretty much since lap three or lap four, if he can pull this off, it'll be one of the best drives we've ever seen at a World Tour event. But he still owes a stop. Koke Lopez, there you go. He's got his fuel light flashing there. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, there is Miyazono. He needs to come in at the end of this lap. He'll put in a bit more fuel, and it'll be a sprint to the end between himself, Wong, and uh, where is Cody? Cody's made the second stop as well. So I think Wong maybe has uh, strateg uh, strategized himself out of the opportunity of a podium right now, but uh, that's what's funny. And he comes in, one litre left in the tank. He was really eking that out. That is calculated. That is as good as it possibly gets there for Takuma Miyazono. We know how impressive he is. He comes in, he's got to take fuel on board. This is going to seem like an eternity. He's sat there trying to get this fuel in the car. Don't worry, though, about the likes of Randarush and Koke Lopez. They've still got to make another stop in this race, respectively, as well. So uh, they will have to stop. Now, how much fuel is he going to take on board? 
on this one, just enough to get him to the end. There's only 10 laps that are remaining, but of course he wants to have a little bit more in his tank, just in case he has to squabble with anybody else out there on track and be able to go flat out as, as fast as he possibly can. I think he overfilled a tiny bit there for, for that reason exactly, Tom, to go just as quick as he can with no one in his way. So. There goes Blajan, that's very important for the race. So Patrick Blajan has managed to jump Miazono, and they're now fighting on circuit. They're going to be scrapping to the end. Now this could end up being a fight, but Miazono gets it wrong on exit there. I think maybe called himself down a little bit in the pit lane. That happens when you're, you're there putting in hot laps. The adrenaline's running, and then you're forced to stop and be calm for a while. You get back out, and then that same adrenaline isn't quite there. You've got to just ramp back up to it again. So we have Baptiste Beauvoir. More importantly for Cody Nikola Koski, he's got about nine seconds between himself and Miazono, and he does not have to pit again, so this is going to have to be an absolutely titanic here, a uh, drive for Miazono if he wants to pull this off. Yeah, he's going to have to really pull something under the bag, as you said, Jimmy, because he uh, is now in the turbulent air of Patrick Blasian. He'll have the advantage of the slipstream. Now, here's Randy Roos coming to the pit lane. Coque Lopez also following Suze as well. So, those two drivers coming in, the Frenchman and the Spaniard from the front of this race. Jonathan Wong, of course, will take over at the front in this one, as you begin to expect. Randy Roos, no fuel left in the car as well. Coque Lopez with one litre. You said about calculated, Jimmy, you were absolutely spot on there because these drivers are pushing it to the extreme here in this grand final and you can see them just sat there waiting, waiting, waiting. Koke Lopez, Lakovsky comes through now and takes over third position in this one. Lakovsky, of course, on a different strategy call to those around him. Is it going to be something that pays off for the Australian? We've been busy looking at Takuma Miyazato, who has gotten the better of Patrick Blajan. He's managed to get ahead of him. He's now through into fourth place and, crucially, he's got that clear track in front of him. Nine laps now remain. So, right, as things stand, it's five seconds between Miyazono and this man here and Cody Nikolakovsky. So here's the overtake, just nice up the inside, done and dusted very quickly, just calculated again. He is not going to be held up, Miyazono. But at the moment, uh, when all the strategies are done, because Jonathan Wong and Danny Solis have to lead, Cody will be leading this race. So it's going to be a sprint to the finish. What has Miyazono got left in the tank? He's already gaining, but Patrick Blajan is trying to go with him. Now, the last thing Miyazono wants or Patrick wants really is to fight. They don't need to fight right now. If they do, they're going to just give free time away to Cody and to the guys in front. The stats have a lot more to lose than they do to gain. You're absolutely right. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out, but you can see Blajan is looking very dicey indeed. That slipstream is so pronounced in these cars. Slight lift there from Patrick Blajan. He's going to try and work with Takuma Miyazono here. This is his best bet there, Blajan. If he gets involved in the squabble, as you say, he's going to be giving up time. It's not going to do any favours for the Hungarian driver. We know how calm both of these guys are in terms of their demeanour, and the best thing they can do is just work together here in these stages of this race. Down in towards T1 we go. Blajan again lifting off. Gingerly on the brakes through there as well, not allowing Takuma Miyazono to close up and uh, pull away too much. So you think if he pulls this off, he is in for a podium. It will be his first ever podium here at a World Tour event for Patrick Blajan. So there's a big chance here he can get this done. We'll have to wait and see. We'll, we'll see what happens. There's still, again, eight laps left in this race. There's been quite a lot of action, actually, for a, for a race. So I assumed it would be quite quiet, but it's just one of those races which has to um, unfold. That's the, the great joy, I think, of watching a longer race as all the strategies play out and then you see how it all works out. And towards the end, you get this great big crescendo as they all just uh, come together. And you get a very notable, very scary finish, usually, if you're one of the guys commentating. Oh, I am. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> so, Miyazano. Here he is. Oh, just kicking up some sparks on the wall there. Even a little bit of paintwork there for the marshals to clean up after he's done. That's very kind of Takuma. I'm sure they appreciate that. Patrick Bajan, will he go for the inside here? Will he stay where he is? Still there. They're working. Now, the gap has come down from Mizano to Cody by about a second in the last couple of laps. And let's look at lap times here. Um, yeah, at the moment, Mizano is actually lapping about Hello. half just a second. Hello. Just have a look at the audience. Safe, safe fuel. fuel. That's <laughs> right. Get the safe fuel sign there. At least it's not written on a bit of cardboard. Yeah, I mean, my, my cardboard sign still sits in the shed, bless it. Uh, <laughs> well, that's very much ignored. But yeah, same deal, that's right. I'm sure he's thinking that right now. But um, the thing is with uh, Mears, I know, is he put enough fuel in, I think, to go to the end. So he's pushing now. Patrick, maybe not. Mm. So uh, it, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to work Yeah, these, out. these are all the variables you've got to be considering. Now seven laps remaining here as well. I'll tell you what, testament to Jonathan Wong. He's done a really good job of keeping that gap at a constant to Danny Solis, who's been in P2. And Solis has had a bit of a quiet race, but for that one slip and a slide that we saw in the early stages of this one. But both of those two 
we think, out of contention for the race victory as things stand. It's Takumi Miyazono, Patrick Blajan and Cody Dukowski who are the three drivers we think that will be going toe-to-toe -to -toe for this race win as it comes down into the closing stages. Flicking it through that chicane there for Miyazono, who's just pulled out a couple of car lengths over Patrick Blajan here, just keeping his nose very clean. You can see an incident is under investigation between Randa Rouge and Adam Sassuolo, and the collision there, you would imagine, for uh, Sassuolo being the disadvantaged uh, driver because Randa Rouge on the timing screens at least is ahead as things stand, but we'll hopefully get a replay of that and confirmation as to what has happened. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out between those guys. Now, here is Cody Lukowski, third position. We just saw uh, Takuma Miyazono just going through your shot, and that gap has come down quite significantly. It's really shrunk. 3.2 seconds, it now sits at. What are the lap times, Jimmy? We've got a, a fastest lap of the race from Patrick Blashand with a 19.6, and they are both lapping about a second a lap faster than Cody here on course. So Cody, I think, really starting to suffer with tyre wear on that soft compound. He's going to have to defend from Miyazono and from Blashand. This is going to come down to the wire, this race, as we knew it would. It always seems to in Nations Cup, of course. Gone from Wong and Daniel Solis first and second, still both owing a pit stop at the moment, which we'll probably see a bit towards the end of the race. But right now, Miazono and Patrick Blajan, they are coming through the field at a rate of knots. And the way Patrick Blajan is looking as close as he can get to Miazono, he's also in contention for the win. There they are, in the background there. You can see them now in the same shot coming through the chicane. Cody is having to work as hard as he can to keep these tyres alive, but it seems like a losing battle. Let's see if we can get another look back through the track, coming now down to the, uh, the hairpin. You can just see him pop into frame there, and you saw it well in front, Danny Solis, we're catching him on circuit. So really, Cody's only hope now is to catch Danny, get a bit of a draft, and then hope to try and defend to the end. It's getting very exciting indeed. Five laps remaining here for the grand final. Over the line we go. Cody Lukowski has got it all to do, but I don't know if it's going to be quite enough for the Australian driver. The crowd here at Sydney would love to see him doing well, but... He's got a very fast charging to Kuma Miyazono and Patrick Blajan, who are fighting for this victory behind. And you can see visibly how much that gap has shrunk over the last few laps. We can see from the lap times on our telemetry here as well how different it is between them. Blajan in the 1 minute 20s for the first time, but to Kuma Miyazono still lapping in the 1 minute 19s. By comparison, Cody Lukowski's last lap was a 1 minute 20.6. So you can see Lukowski is really struggling to compared to Takuma. Miyazono here. It's about eight tenths a lap at the moment, Tom, between these two, and we've got five laps left. If you're any good at maths, that means that Miyazono will be on Cody before the end of this race. In fact, you can just see how much this gap has come down now. You see Miyazono, you see he's starting to think about it, heart rate's rising a little bit. He's really concentrating right now, and that's the most difficult thing you can do if you're Takuma Miyazono right now. You know you have a chance at winning this. Don't think about anything else until the job is done, until you cross the line. Keep your concentration at hand. Look at the line through there, absolutely beautiful. This is a man who is in supreme control of his car right now. He's in hunt mode and he is hunting down Cody Lukowski at time again. Uh, another decent lap, 19.7, but Patrick Blajan behind, he's coming with him. It's a 19.5 from Patrick Blajan, who you can see on the relative right, there he is behind us. Patrick Blajan's coming through too. So Cody has got not one, but two people behind him at the moment. This is very exciting indeed. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, because it is about to go down to the wire. We know that they're only battling for third place on your screen at the moment, but Jonathan Wong and Danny Solis, if you've just joined us, have still got to make a pit stop. This is the battle for the de facto race lead in the grand final and, of course, the overall win in the Nations Cup for World Tour 1 here in Sydney. It is hugely exciting. There is a lot of pressure on these drivers and they have been absolutely out of their skin for the last 30 minutes or so and it is coming right down to a cliff hanger, which is what we absolutely adore about the FIA Gran Turismo Championships. We love seeing the best drivers in the best machinery going to... Oh, Patrick Bajan! He's in the wall, Tom! He's made a mistake going through, he's gone! He's out! I think you're right, you're absolutely spot on. That is so disappointing there for Patrick Bajan. Oh, it has, it's cost him dear. He's going tumbling down the order. And we were just saying about the pressure that Patrick Bajan was under. And there you go, it is all boiled over for him, sadly. That is just so disappointing. I really want to see a replay for Patrick Blajad. And that is massively, massively disappointing. The wind will have really been knocked out of his sails after that one.
His best result in a World Tour event was third place in the grand final in Monaco last year. We thought he could be on for challenging for the victory, but right when it mattered for the Hungarian driver, a simple mistake, a very easy mistake to make at that point in the lap has cost him very dear indeed. Oh, Patrick, Patrick, mate. That is... That is... You, yeah, you hate to see stuff like that happen towards the end of the race. He was looking so good, but of course it's not a 27 that race, it's a 30 that race. And unfortunately for him, that's him out of contention. I think he just clipped the inside of the second part of the chicane, which just sent him uh, very quickly to the scene of the accident, as you say, Tom. So, yeah, not great for him, but we still have a fight going on. It's now down to two. Cody Nikolikovsky from Australia, Takuma Miyazono from Japan. This is going to go down to the wire. We still have Danny Solis and Jonathan Wong yet to pit. Now, I think, thankfully for Cody, he's starting to catch Danny. He might be starting to get a sniff of a draft now, which will be helping him along a little bit. But it doesn't matter, because Miyazano is a lot closer. This is really going to be... Miyazano, Cody, sorry, is going to be just having his eyes in his mirrors for the entirety of the left of the race. A bit of a flash there for Miyazano, too. This is, this is going down to the wire. And the thing is, you can bet that Jonathan Wall and Danny Thomas, they're going to be pitting on to the last lap, because they only want to run, want to run one lap on the hard compound of tyres here. You see the crowd chanting, let's go, Cody, that's right. Their home uh, audience is right behind Cody at the moment, but he's got a lot to do. Two and a bit laps remaining. Daniel Solis in front. A very, very fast Mears on the behind. I think he might have burnt his tyres a little bit, though. So this might not be it. He's actually starting to drop back a little bit. This might be the boost that Cody needs, or maybe, maybe he's just trying to time things a bit better. We'll have to wait and see. Now, really, what Cody needs to happen now is for Danny just to get out of the way, get out of the way as soon as he can so he can focus on just making an effort. Look how much Miyazono uh, just gains in there on the braking zone. Oh, he's sideways out of there. That would cost him a little bit of time, but uh, we really are getting in now to the point where Miyazono has to make a move, but it's going to be now or never. Just to remind you, neither of these drivers have won a World Tour event in the past. Cody Lukowski, he's come very close indeed, finishing second on multiple occasions in 2019. Takuma Miyazono has also bagged a few podiums, but these guys are going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, bumper to bumper, and this is going to be hugely exciting to see how it all plays out. Miyazono is closer than ever against Cody Lukowski. Is he going to try and find his way past? We ride on board with Takuma Miyazono. Is he going to launch something down the inside into the chicane of T2? He pulls out the slip stream, he goes hard on the brakes. Miyazono side by side with Lukowski. He tries to run him out into the curb. He's still side by side, but Miyazono's on the outside line. There's contact between the two. And he goes through into the race lead. Miyazono is in front here into third place. I said the race lead. I know it's third on the track, but of course, Solis and Wong have still got to make their pit stops. And this is the battle, essentially, for the win in this grand final. It's not over yet, though, because Danny Solis is in front right now. He'll be keeping Miyazono behind. Here's a replay, but we're coming down to an overtaking point in the circuit. I'd much rather be watching that, to be honest. Miyazono, here he is, going to the inside. Yes, we've seen that. Come on. Let's go past that. There's Lukowski there side by side right now. Here we go, back onto the on-track action. Cody's back through. No, he's not. He's, he's past Danny Solo. Sorry, so now he's now chasing Miyazano. He's going to be in the grand position, though, of having the toe going down the T1. If he, if he can stay at Miyazano through, he's having to lift a little bit there. He's in the draft now. It's going to come down to the final lap. Will he go to the inside here or will he wait? Looks to the inside and come down to the brakes now. And he's there. Danny Solo's going to be inside. Watch out, Danny. You've got a pit, mate. One comes into the pits. He's going onto the hard compound attire. Miyazano is sideways there. And now this is Cody. His chance he has to be in the draft, weaving in front is Miyazono trying to break the sit stream. I'm not sure if Cody is going to be close enough. Here he comes, though. 310, he's got the open speed, looks to the outside. No, he stays behind for now. On the final lap, then, here the battle for the race lead and the win of the Nations Cup in World Tour One for the 2020 FIA Gran Turismo Championship. It's Miyazono who's led the way here, now leading the way on the final lap with a brilliant strategy that three stopper and it's paying off beautifully. Can Cody Lecomte? on home soil do anything? Is he going to come under too much pressure? Will he have something in the locker? Will he think about a lunge down the inside into the final corner? You can see him there with the draft coming in through the left-hander as they come down now. Lukowski to a great run. Miyazono goes to fence him. He's going to have to go hard on the brakes very shortly. Ducks under the slip stream. Lukowski goes to the outside. Miyazono on the inside. He's not going to be able to find his way past there. Surely it's Lukowski and Miyazono does hold on for the race lead coming into this chicane. So here we are, the last part of the lap coming from the chicane. Miyazono touches the wall. Cody's right up with him now. He's on the sip stream. Miyazono goes to fence him to the inside. This is the last lap of the race coming down to the last corner. Cody looks to the outside. Can he go a long way round here?
here. And that's coming in, oh. it. There's contact between the two. Villazano holds the inside. Cody will try and keep it there. Still side by side. It's a drag race to the line. Who's there? Get it. Cody's there. And it's going to be Villazano by the smallest margin. Three, one, three tenths of a second. Not even that. Sorry, three hundredths of a second. Jonathan Wong in third. Maraglino fourth. And that is the closest finish we have ever had at a grand Trismo World Tour event. Oh, <laughs> oh my word, what a finish. Takuma Miyazono becomes a Gran Turismo World Tour winner here in the Nations Cup Grand Final. A three-stop strategy. It was bold, it was brave, and it was brilliant. It paid off hugely for Takuma Miyazono. He wins here in Sydney. The disconsolate face there you saw from Cody Nikola Lakovsky. Well, he can hold his head high. He really put in a strong performance and he tried his best he gave it everything sadly it wasn't quite enough and Takuma Miyazono the Japanese driver wins the grand final and the Nations Cup here in Sydney wow what an absolutely mega weekend of racing what else can you say from that really I mean I know a lot of you guys are here rooting, of course, for, uh, for Cody, but you cannot deny the performance there put in by Miyazono. Of course, coming up, the extra lap. Make sure you're staying tuned for that. We're going to have a chat with the drivers, get their thoughts and feelings after that. I'm, I guarantee you it's going to be a good one. But wow. <laughs> you're right there, mate. I think you've just about gotten your breath back, haven't you? Now the, uh, the Fitbit says I'm dead at the moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did about 30,000 steps in the last five <laughs> laps over the course of that one. But that was just unbelievable, yeah, wasn't it? Takuma Miyazono wins his first ever World Tour event here in uh, Sydney. And don't forget, of course, you can vote for your Michelin driver of the day, hashtag Michelin FIA GTC. Let's take a look at some replays, shall we, from that grand final. Piece it all together. It was unbelievable. Full of action. Away from the lights, it was Jonathan Wong who started from pole position ahead of Baptiste Beauvoir. It all kicked off, though, fairly early doors. We saw Beauvoir going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cody Nikola Lakovsky four position into the right hander here was Matt Simmons playing a good game of slingshot off the track and that sent Adam Sassuolo spinning round ah you can see <laughs> he knows it's over at that point a bit of a smile okay and that was probably my one of my other chances of the race there Patrick Blanton just, just just sending it on the inside of Danny so there's no reply to that that late in the day but of course it wouldn't all go well with Patrick unfortunately as the race uh, went on so, Danny Solis versus Salvatore Maraclino at this point. Bit of contact between the two. Tatsuya Sugawara getting caught up in that strife there as well. Here's Lakovsky going for the move against Jonathan Wong for the race lead. Sent it and timed it perfectly there, did the Australian driver. Concentration on his face, evident to see. There was Patrick Blagen coming into the pit lane to Kuma Miyazono with his bold three-stop strategy paying off for him ahead of Patrick Blagen. It was, and we thought it was going to be Blagen versus Miyazono for this race lead as well. And it could have been a very exciting battle between those three drivers, but sadly a mistake from Blagen putting him out of contention. Here is Lakovsky versus Takuma Miyazono on the penultimate lap of the race. And, and it all came down. Looking nice and easy there, sorry, Sean. And then it was all this, wasn't it? What a finish this was. Yep, you can see Miyazono there then finding his way through up the inside. Side by side, a drag to the line at 32 thousandths of a second, separating Takuma Miyazono, <laughs> his fellow Japanese competitors coming on stage to celebrate here then as well. And well, that is absolutely unbelievable. So Miyazono finishes in first, Lakovsky in second, and Jonathan Wong in third position. That is your podium, Maraclino, Sugawara, and Koke Lopez in 4th, 5th and 6th, then Sassuolo, Ryan de Rouge, Danny Solis, Baptiste Beauvoir, Blajan and Matthew Simmons running out our top 12 finalists here for the 2020 FIA Gran Turismo Championships Nations Cup. Well, that was unbelievable. We're about to get podium celebrations underway relatively shortly here in Sydney. I'll tell you what, the atmosphere down here all weekend mm. has been electric and those last couple of laps when we had the chanting for Cody from the Australian crowd when we saw the atmosphere when we had the enthusiasm mm. from our Japanese competitors it was unbelievable got to say thank you so much to all you guys who have come along here you've made this event absolutely amazing for everyone here and of course yourself definitely this is what it's all about and you'll want to experience what I think is probably one of the best races we've ever had here in the FIA GTC championship so yeah amazing it really was yeah, unbelievable, wasn't it? What was your moments of the race there? If you had to pick one. <laughs> uh, there's so many, I know, because it was just a, such a drama-filled effect. Well, of, of course, the finish is an, e an easy pick, but it's going to have to be Patrick Blajan. I think it was just the story of what could have happened. Imagine that finish, but with three people. 
that, that, <laughs> that, that was what we were unfortunately were robbed of, where Patrick made a mistake. He'll be kicking himself, unfortunately, but you know, what, the thing he can take away is that he's got the pace. Well, the man who didn't make a mistake was Takuma Miyazono, and Julia is with him now. Yes, I am. I'm also... I think I lost my voice a little bit from screaming right at the end there. I have never heard the crowd go so crazy. Uh, how do you feel this is your, your first win? Yeah. Yeah, I'm so amazed to have finally did it. I won. This is the happiest moment of my life. Oh my goodness, it's the happiest moment of his life. I love that. That, that final, final moment. Uh, it's, it's the closest we've ever had uh, someone going across the line there. And, and I, let's not talk about time. It was that close. Let's be honest, this close. Um, how did you keep your cool? えっと、そうですね。もう勝つ時はその自然に流れが来るって思っていたので、もうそんなに焦らずにもう絶対自分は勝てるんだって思って落ち着いて走りました。え、so it was, could have gone either way. Do you have anything you'd like to, to share with him? そう、yeah, so Cody, he is my rival, so it's great to actually finally get the victory. Um, but at the same time, this is his home country. Um, I feel a little bit sorry for him that I, I showed him up in his home country. Um, so sorry for that. <laughs> oh, well, look, let's give up. Both of them are winners, but me as I do is our winner. Give a big round of applause. We're going to throw it back to the desk now and get on with our podium. Yeah, cheers there, Julia. Well. Lovely to hear Takuma Miyazono's thoughts there. And so gracious and wonderful towards Cody Lukowski as well. Definitely. I mean, for, for Cody, I think the thing to realise here is that maybe this time last year, he wasn't really up there. And now here he is competing at the sharp end. He's there on merit. And I know we will be disappointed, but again, we have to really appreciate that the drive by Miyazono. I said at the start, if this comes off, it's one of the best drives we've ever seen, and I think I think that's, I can agree with that. I think some people are a little bit worried of the fact that Igor Fraga and Mikhail Hazal weren't going to be here this weekend mm. going into the Nations Cup. The quality of driving that we have seen tonight just dispelled any myths that uh, were floating around that, that it was going to be a lesser show because it was phenomenal, wasn't it? Start to finish. And the thing is, I've had the overwhelming pleasure to be here for every World Tour event back since 2018, and the, the standards and the driving have just done this the entire time. When I, went, when I started, I thought, maybe I can have a go at this, and now I'm like, no, no, no chance. <laughs> These guys are far beyond me. But of course, you guys could be here next race, get involved, get your own sport mode uh, underway, and maybe you can go, we'll be commentating on you next time. Yeah, the online season starts on the 18th of March. Get yourself involved, get a PlayStation 4. As we showed you earlier on in the broadcast, you don't necessarily have to have uh, an expensive rig. You can have an old desk, an old wheel. You can even just play on a DualShock 4 controller. I'll tell you what, I've got a great story about a friend of mine used to play on a plastic wheel with zero force feedback. And there, there's me with my multi-thousand pound rig, and he still, still just wipes the floor <laughs> with me. So I'm not sure if that's me being bad or him being good, but I like to think it's the, uh, it's the latter. Though. Don't hate the player, hate the game. That's yeah. The thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point stands is that anyone can take part. Don't be ever dis 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 uh, disparaged, it's a difficult word to say, uh, by not being able to have the best equipment because you don't need it. Yeah, absolutely right then. Uh, well, Let's have a look, shall we, at the uh, qualifying through the online series. If you fancy getting yourself involved at home, you've got to enter on sport mode in GT Sport. The online season, as we said, starts in the middle of March, and you can get involved with that. The top rankings from stage one will go through to our next World Tour event, and then you can see from that it goes forward. Um, players with the highest points are selected. Uh, the totals in each region, we've got uh, three different regions involved, five, sorry, five different regions involved, I should say, as you can see here. Check and see if your country is eligible within that region. Get yourself involved, get online on GT Sport, and get yourself here to these World Tour events in the future.
Yeah, definitely. You can have Tom Brooks talking to you. Yeah, I know, that's a bit of a problem, sadly. It's a bit of a disadvantage. You see, World Tour points are awarded, awarded at each event in 2020 as well. Uh, first gets three points, second gets two points, one gets, uh, third gets one point there. Uh, these World Tour points will be taken into the World Finals as well. So that means that Miyazono will take three points now into the World Tour, uh, World Tour Finals, which would be a great start for him when we get to that event later on this year. It could be pretty crucial, couldn't it, uh, going into that World Final? We don't know what's going to happen at this stage in the season. It could end up being a whitewash. I highly doubt it, though, given the level of competition and uh, what we've seen out on track. It's anybody's game, isn't it? That's yeah. the thing we love about it. Definitely. And of course, uh, for Miyazono, because he's won here, he has that place at the World Tour secure now. That's that. He's qualified. But as you said, more points going in as well. But uh, anyone can qualify. That's, that's the absolute beautiful thing about it. Anyone apart from me, I can't qualify. I'm, I'm not good enough. <laughs> I wouldn't like to give it a go there either, to be fair, mate. Right. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, shout out as well to Jonathan Wong, finishing in third place in that race. Um, understated, I think, is Definitely. probably the best way of putting it. But again, a really, really strong strategy from him. And uh, again, a nice podium. Not a bad result. Well, he went, he went into that race not thinking that he'd be able to do that. He, he said, oh, I'm not very fast in these cars, I'm not quick, and yet he still gets a podium. Very impressive. Mm. Let's take a look, shall we, at uh, some highlights then. There is Kim Miyazono. We saw him on screen. Some highlights from his evening. Starting the way in semi-final A, he started from pole position, led the field down towards turn one. He had Adam Sosuilo for company, as you can see in the opening stages of this race. Again, just looking calm and confident, as Takuma Miyazono does. Doesn't ever look phased, does he, out there on track? And that was proven to be the case. And that's the thing I loved about tonight here. Two more different types of machinery than you could ever imagine. A Mazda RX-7 that loves to go sideways, contrasted with this, the Rebel X2019, which is full of downforce and high grip. Oh, that finish, watching it back again, I'm just... You can see that. I don't think he knew he had it right to the very end. And in come his, uh, his uh, compatriots there. And of course, these guys, you know, a lot of them don't speak English. So they only really speak to each other a lot here, even though, of course, everyone tries to include each other. So it's a big deal for any of them whenever they do well. And just goes to show that it's a great big family here at GT. Yeah, that's the thing. I love that embrace. We saw it on stage. We saw it with uh, Ryota Kokobun yeah. last year in Tokyo, and they just love it. They're so passionate about it, aren't they? Anyway, it's time to get our podium celebrations underway here in Sydney. Let's welcome our three drivers on to the rostrum for the Nations Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our third place finisher onto the podium in the Nations Cup. It's Jonathan Wong! From Australia, in second position, please welcome Cody Nikola Latkovsky! <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Nations Cup for the 2020 FIA Gran Turismo Championships World Tour 1 in Sydney, please welcome Takuma Miyazono! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your respect please for the national anthem of Japan. The National Anthem of Japan plays out for Takuma Miyazono, the winner of World Tour 1 for the Nations Cup of the 2020 FIA Gran Turismo Championships. Bebenda makes his way down to the podium as well. The Michelin man. 
And now we get ready for our third place trophy. Presented to Jonathan Wong. Presented by David Lang, the brand manager for Michelin Australia. The second place trophy presented to Cody Nikola Lakowski by Andrew Papadopoulos, the president of Motorsport Australia. And the watch presented to our winning driver of Takuma Miyazono on behalf of Tag Heuer, the official timing partner for GT Sports. <laughs> presented by Kazunori Yamauchi, the producer of the Gran Turismo series. <laughs> and now the first place trophy presented to the winner of World Tour 1 in Sydney for Takuma Miyazono! Well, there we are. What an unbelievable turn of events here in Sydney. Julia, nice to have you back at the GT desk as well. Hi, sorry, I, I was just like really enjoying. Yeah, I'm here for a very, very special occasion because we have some we have some news to announce. Do we? Do you, we do. Do you want to do the honours? You can do the honours if you like. You do the honours. Do you want to do the honours? I'll, I'll do the honours. You, you do the honours. Go on then. <laughs> uh, the announcement is that our next World Tour event for 2020's FIA Grand Turismo Championship will be coming to you from the Nurburgring at oh, the 24 yes. hour race. This was mad last year. It was one of the best uh, world tours we went on. It was crazy. So good. And it's good to go back to the good one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming during the 24 hour race on the 22nd and 23rd of May 2020. I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. I feel like that's too long to not see you guys, but I suppose we'll have to manage. That's right, Snapchat, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look, don't go anywhere because we'll be back in a few moments with the extra lap because there's just way too much excitement and gossip for one show. I'm excited. Are you excited, Jimmy? Well, I've got to run up there, so I'm very excited. Got some stairs to go up. Are you excited, Tom? I can't wait, Julia. All right, well, don't go anywhere. We'll see you very, very soon. Seaside at Sydney. Unexpectedly with this lap because this is one of my fastest lap even in my practice. So when we approach into the first corner, we break right before the curb start and try to don't go too fast on these two corners. You want to strike as fast as you can and full throttle out of the corner to get the fastest speed out of this corner and into the turn five, I think. Full throttle right here, don't go too too far, use the cap on the inside and try to strike up your car out of the corners. And in this free access corner, you want to try to have the fastest slide through the corner, but don't let off the throttle. You need to thread out it and try to use the shortest distance into this downhill hairpin. You want to break 
before the 100 and roll it a bit into the corner and try to control your throttle. Don't let the tires spin out when you exit. This, another fast corner, you need to fret out, but try to don't do a, too much on the steering on the inside of the curves. And that's the final corner. You want to break right after the 100 and smoothly accelerate out of the corner. And that's the, my lap on the pull up. Hope you enjoy it. Remember to subscribe the Gran Turismo channel and hope you can come back to see the final in Sunday. Welcome to the extra lap where we have a little bit of extra time to go through just what happened in the Gran Turismo Championships. I mean, usually there's way too much drama to go through and we need to like, you know, really like pull it apart. But actually, I feel like I just want to use this time now for a bit of a sit down. That was a bit too much excitement at the end. I'm joined by Peter Line from For Forbes magazine. Um, what did you think of that final? My voice is broken. Was that a blind or a what? Good heavens, how about that? Yeah. I mean, I spoke to Cody uh, yesterday b b before the race and he was really pumped. He was working on a really detailed strategy and I think he just about pulled it off, but congratulations to Miazona. What a great drive. Miazona is an incredible strategist. Very, right? You've always got to watch whatever's happening. Just keep your eye on what Miazona is up to in any race and it will always be incredibly interesting. Um, so, you know, obviously you've, you've you know, written and, and been involved in motorsports for a very, very long period of time and you've kind of seen Gran Turismo itself grow. I mean, how is it for you kind of seeing the sort of scale we're at now? Well, I first met Yamauchi-san about 23 years ago when they started the the, the game franchise, and I've watched it develop over the years through all the iterations. Uh, I'm really amazed today how far they've actually brought the graphics, the sound, the, I mean, the, the graphics from inside the cabin, was that like the best you've ever seen or what? And then you've got the, uh, the steering feel, you've got the pedal rigidity, everything is so real. And I mean, I, I actually raced with Yamoja San at Nürburgring uh, yeah. 10 years ago, yeah. and watching how he practice for that race. We did 100 laps in the virtual world and then went to the real track and we were able to drive 90% of our potential within three laps on the real track. So that's just how Gran Turismo relates to the real world. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and what do you think about some of these incredible races? I mean, there's a huge amount of raw talent here, don't you think? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see five, six, seven of these drivers going on to much greater things, even one or two to Formula One. We saw Igor obviously winning this weekend. I mean, that's fantastic. It's like, you know, our family winning like a, a trophy. That just shows the, the blurring line between uh, virtual and real. I mean, for Igor Fraga to pick up that series championship in the last race of the season in New Zealand, that was amazing. It's, it's, you know, it's been a blooming spectacular weekend, don't you think, guys? Have you enjoyed it? Yes, yes fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much for joining us, Peter. I think it's time now to throw it over to Jimmy to get all the stories from the horses about the, the winners up there. How's it going, Jimmy? Well, thank you very much, Juliet. Great to hear from Peter there from Forbes. Now, I am joined right now by our top three winners, or winners finish, I should say, sorry, from our Nations Cup Final. Congratulations, all of you, first of all. Well done. Great to have you here. Uh, and we'll start off now with Takuma, because you're here right now. First of all, congratulations. Amazing result. Um, now, after Tokyo, um, I, uh, you were very upset there. To finally win here, how does it feel? <laughs> に勝つっていうまでの道のりがもう本当に長くて去年も2位とか3位とか優勝まであと一歩っていうのが本当に多くてそれでもう今年はあの開幕戦であの勝つことができてもう本当に嬉しいんですけどあまり実感が湧いてい
I couldn't quite make that step. So today I'm really happy that I finally did it. I won, I got the win, um, but it hasn't really settled in yet. I mean, how, how can it? It's, it's a great place to, to have a win here. The other thing I wanted to ask you was about your strategy. You, you seem to come up with crazy strategies. How? <laughs> how are you doing this? えっと、今回はえっと、ツーストップとスリーストップがだいたいえっと、配達としてはえっと、同じぐらいだなっていうのは分かってたんですけど、えっと、2回の2回ストップだと集団の間で走ってた走ることになってしまうかなと思ったので
Thank you. Well, see, the thing is, it, it's, uh, it's very sunny here in Australia, so you can have one front and one back like that for ultimate protection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll try. I'll give it a try. I'll, give it, I'll, I'll ask you one more thing, just the just, uh, uh, same sort of question I asked to Jonathan. Grand final, you have three points towards it now. You've had probably the best start you can have. What's the plan to prepare? First of all, the first point is big, but これから今回と同じようにあのワールドツアーにあの参加できるかもわからないですしまずはあの浮かれることなくあのオンラインシーズンをしっかり戦ってでまたこの場に立っているように頑張っていけたらなと思っています。Yeah, so the three points is really big,、um, and I hope to get that towards the final. But still, I, I know I need to go away and see if I can come back to these events. I still need to qualify, I still need to go online, and that's where I need to give my best. So I'm not taking anything for granted. Okay, sure. Well, thank you so much, Akuma, our mission driver of the day, and of course, winner of the Nations Cup race here in Sydney. And now we're going to throw it down to Tom and Lucas to have a chat about today's events. Oh, goodness, goodness me, Lucas. I mean, have you got your breath back from that one? <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. <laughs> that was intense.、Uh, probably the best race we ever、uh, watched in Gran Turismo FIA Championship.、Uh, just、uh, the strategy,、uh, the difference of strategy. Mr. Strategy Mirasono was just、uh, <laughs> fantastic.、Uh, we were watching him from the beginning with that hard compound, and we knew that、uh, he was avoiding the traffic. and And all the, all the craziness in, in the, in the mid pack. And, and we knew that、uh, Miyasono was uh, coming uh, for, to fight for, for the victory. But uh, uh, I was impressed when, when Cody stopped.、Uh, well, he had the, the hard tires for two laps. So maybe that's one, one of the things he has to watch for, for the next races because、uh, his rivals、uh, they only drove for only one lap on the hard tires. So, so maybe that's where he lost.、Uh, The, the race here in, in Sydney. Well, there's always room for improvement, as they say,、yes. isn't there? So, well, Lucas, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you at home for joining us as well for round, or World Tour one, I should say, of the 2020 FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships. We'll be back in the Nurburgring 22nd, 23rd of May. We'll see you then for World Tour two of the 2020 FIA GT Championships. Catch you then.